hello, 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 welcome, 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 welcome everybody, welcome to Warhammer Sunday, <clears throat> back to our normal operating time, yes, hello and welcome to everyone, and you can see here some tools laid out on the desk, this suggests we are doing the buildy buildy, so welcome to everybody, it is Sunday, it is 3pm, that means I need a swig of coffee because my throat's really dry, hang on, <coughs> oh dear, only just started and already I've got the dry throat. Uh, it means I'm working on my Warhammer army, the unending forces of the Holy Contrivance. Yes, my Principality of Zeon themed Warhammer army. Principality of Zeon from the Mobile Suit Gundam universe. Yes, we're combining Mobile Suit Gundam and Warhammer. What? Makes no sense at all. I know, I know. So yes, that's what we're doing today. Uh, I do this every Sunday. Uh, pretty much I spend my weekend working on it and I just decided to make a two or three hours of a Sunday time for you to hang out with me in the chat and I'll do some work and you can have fun in the chat and talk to each other and it's all gravy. So I'm going to get some work done today and you guys are all going to be awesome in the chat. Uh, as always, don't forget if you want to ask me questions, I do depend on you giving me stuff to talk about. Please for the love of dog do. Uh, just put your question in chat in big fat capital letters so I can't possibly miss it. Be a question about anything. It doesn't have to be about Warhammer or model making, it can be a question about leaves or air or wood or dust or whatever you want. It could be a question about anything. Just put it in big fat capital letters in the chat. Uh, if you want to do a super chat, you can. It's the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. It just puts it in a colour box and makes a little sound so I can hear it so I know you've done a super chat and I can see it. I have less chance of missing your question. If you can't see the chat, the chat is here. If you can't see the chat, type things in on your browser. That means you're not on the YouTube channel, you're watching it somewhere else. So click on the little YouTube icon that's down in the bottom right corner here. And that will take you to the YouTube page where you can see the live chat and type in your comments. But if you can't get into chat, don't panic. I'm going to take my hoodie off because it's really warm. Wow, it's really warm. Oh. If you can't get into chat, don't panic. Just send me an email. You can send an email with any question. Where's the thing? There it is to fox at modelmakingguru.com and ask me any question you like. Oh, get my hoodie off, it's far too warm. Ooh. Uh, as always, don't forget, uh, we're gonna be giving some stickers away later on. So if you want to send a question and answer for me to use in the giveaway section, uh, you can do, and I'll send you a sticker if I use a question. Uh, just send your question and your answer, Dave, question and answer to fox at modelmakingguru.com. Uh, and just if include your name and address if you want me to send you a sticker if you don't include your name and address I'll just assume you don't want one um, but yes get your questions answered in <sighs> so how is everyone how are we all today uh, I'm going to be working on today uh, one of the gifts that I was sent and I'll show you that in a moment don't forget of course as always we are still doing the stream boss battle which is here I'll be added to the current stream boss his health bar is what we are 77,054 uh, you guys can whittle down his health uh, and whoever gets him to zero wins two to three hundred quids worth of Games Workshop or Forge World goodies just for themselves, absolutely free of charge. Uh, it's you can how do you get his health down? You can subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're not already a subscriber. Uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell, and that will take a little bit of his health off. Uh, you can do a super chat, like I mentioned before, that will also take a little bit of health off. Blech, wow, words take a little bit of his health off. Or if you want to, you can do a tip through the tip jar, which is down here, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Again, that will take some health off. And the more you put through as a tip or the more you put through as a super chat, the more of Aviad's health it takes off. And if you get him to zero, kapow, you've just won basically 300 quid worth of stuff, maybe. All the money that goes through that is then put into the budget to buy the prizes. So you're helping fund the prize fund yourself. So there you go. So he's on 77,000 something now. So get, get your things coming through. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to clear my throat because I've got really dry throat. One second. It's the hazard of giving up smoking six months ago. It's really good and healthy and everything. But I just, I can't talk for more than 10 minutes before I get a dry throat. Oh. Right, let's have a quick look and see who's in before we do anything. Uh, let me know how it looks today. I've got, I've had to move my lighting around bigger, a bit. It might be a, ooh, hello, what was that? Uh, ooh, uh, Bjorn had donated five pounds. Here's a little tip from Norway. Thank you very much, dude. You're very, very kind. That has taken a little bit of Aviad's health off. Again, don't forget, don't forget, all the money that you raise through Super Chats and the stream tips and things, that goes towards the fund for buying the prize for whoever wins. So there you go. Well, thank you very much for that, dude. Uh, yeah, let me know about the lighting. I've changed the lighting a little bit, so it might look a bit darker or lighter. I don't know. Might be all right. And the sound as well. I've had trouble with the sound again today, this week. Um, let's have a look and see who is in the chat before we go anywhere. 
Uh, let's have a look. Uh, well, on here, James Lorimore was the first one in saying hello, but I know people were in before that because I'd, I'd basically turned the stream on about, I don't know, about half 11, 12 o'clock, and I think Pascal Leaver said hello. <laughs> it was like three or four hours ago. Uh, William Rayborn, welcome. Uh, Chris at Gross Models is in. Hi, dude, Chris. Nim Cinder in. Morning, dudes. Uh, Terry from Smooth Workshop is in. Jengs, as it's Sunday already. Aye. It certainly is. Comes faster and faster each week, dude. Uh, Pascal Leaverse. Oh, music. Uh, Jamie Bone. We all did some Jamie Borry Models is in. Hi, everyone. Uh, let's have a howdy says James Lorimore. My iPad is actually... I'm going to change my iPad settings because it's really hard to see because it's not very bright. Let me just increase the brightness. Where's the, where's the, oh, there it is. There we go. Uh, that's better. Uh, Jamie Byrne asks a question I'll come to in a minute. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Uh, James Lorimore asks, Nim, if they've ever watched the show, nailed it. I've never even heard of it. Uh, what time is it, says LD. Welcome, LD. Welcome, JS. I know. Uh, what time is it, asks Earl. Ratpack30. Welcome, dude. Says, hamster time. Yes. Uh, 0654, says JS Idaho. Earl D says, it's time to get ill. 3.55 p.m. says Rat Pack. Uh, what's that time? I'm so already. I am ill already, so beat you, says Rat Pack. And I botched the spelling. He says, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Go and sit on the step for a while and think about what you've done. Uh, Dave from Butch, that model is in. Afternoon, all he says. Welcome, Dave. Not seen you here for a while. Welcome to have you back. He also drops a bombshell that he's not working on Age of Sigmar. <laughs> How can this be possible? He's working on the uh, Smurfs. He's working on his Smurfs, his Ultramarines. Space Marine! Don't know how he's not working range of Sigma. It's just not right. It's not right. Uh, let's have a look. Who else we got in? Ba -ba 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 -da -ba -da. Ultramarines are ultra, says Earl D. Uh, no, not the Ultra Smurf, says JS Idaho. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of Ultramarines because because it's just they're the bland, boring ones. It's like everybody does Ultramarines. And, but I'm doing the Warhammer Conquest thing and it's Ultramarines, so I have to do Ultramarines. And it's like, okay, if you insist. Yeah. Although it's a very, very good blue colour. I do like the McCrag blue. James Rowmore gives a stat, a stat fact about Canada, uh, which is that Canada is 50% A. Think about it. Think about it. It's 50%. Canada is 50% of the letter A. It's, a. it's an actual fact from the official Stats of Canada Twitter feed. Just made it. Afternoon, everyone. Says Dad. Hey, Dad. Uh, who else have we got? Will anybody else come in? Do, 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 do we have Paul from Team Inept is in gross models. Check your emails. Paul, why are you sending Chris the emails? You could just message him on Facebook. You could just pop over the road. You only live like three feet away. Uh, LD is feeling hoppy. That means he's either drinking or he's got a rabbit. Uh, let's have a look. Greetings all. Fox arranged his tools nicely today, says Candy Brown from Mongo. I actually had them at a jaunty angle so they look straight for you on the screen because to me they'd be like this, you see. And... I thought I'll put them at a jaunty angle so you think they're straight. Uh, if you wonder why I have my ha my camera at a jaunty angle, by the way, because this is a straight line for me. That's straight for me. Um, it's because if I put the camera facing that way, all you get every time I look at what I'm doing is that. My head, my enormous head comes into shot. So this is the compromise so I can, you can see what I'm doing. Kind of. Because I'm right-handed, it will be handy if I could have the camera on that side. It's nowhere to set up my clamping system to clamp the camera mount, so it doesn't really work. Uh, organising guru, says JS Ido. There was a little bit of knolling going on. I was knolling, like proper, you know, Adam Savage style Getting everything in order. Everything facing the same way. It's quite... I tell you what. If you uh, if you make Lego, then do try out Adam Savage's knolling idea. What he calls knolling, and I call shipyard building. That's not straight, is it? <gasps> it's not straight. Oh, no. I call it doing a lumber yard, a lumber yard or a shipyard, where you uh, you get all the parts and you lay them out in neat rows and piles of all the separate different parts. It takes about five hours, but it's dead relaxing. So there you go, nice and neat, nice and neat. Uh, so what else is going? I went to a monk's place for some famous fruitcake yesterday, said James. That'll be an abbey then, I guess, or a, I mean, they said a convent, but it's not a convent. That's nuns, isn't it? Is it an abbey for monks? Uh, where is Sergeant Bones? <gasps> that is Sergeant Bones. Chris at Gross Model says, is it Widge Mass? Oh, with the Widge already? I don't know. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Dad says, hey, William, I'd seen your message earlier, but I couldn't answer. Who's William? Who's at William? Dad. There's no one in the chat called at William. Who are you, who are you sending that to? Am I missing something there? Uh, 
Uh, I missed something. There's a thing there. Uh, Nick Butler's in. Greetings. Hello, he says. Uh, let's have a look. I hate knolling takes far too long for no real purpose, says Paul at Team Inept. That doesn't surprise me at all. But trust me, when you had a, when I was building the Lego Super Star Destroyer and I had a table about this big, knolling was a vital process for getting bits, doing it in steps, not all in one go because it filled up the whole table. But knolling was vital for going bag by bag because I had a small table. Plus, it's kind of chilly. It was very, I could just video it as an ASMR video. Uh, I haven't seen Bones, don't think he's in. Wait, so is that the first time that we, we can genuinely say, where is Sergeant Bones? No! Uh, okay, well, I think that's everyone so far. Nimsindarin preemptively asks, answers the question I haven't asked yet. It says he's rebuilding the Bowie bash from a from a real grade Freedom's rail guns. He broke it. <gasps> Paul at Team Inept says, oh, deep sigh. He says, how much widge could a widge chuck chuck if a widge could chuck chuck? Oh, nearly, nearly. He says, how much widge could a widge chuck chuck if a widge chuck could chuck widge? If you're wondering what this widge thing is, he, Paul bought me the two little miniature figures of the naked man and naked woman. and uh, The French, so the naked woman has high heels on, because of course she does. And the naked man has a really weird 1970s French haircut. But they're just naked man and woman, and he's, he's just... Every time he sees me or talks to me, he wants me to paint the widge. If you don't know what a widge is, I'll let Paul explain it in the chat without... Without breaking the family friendly rule. <laughs> Paint the damn wage, says Paul. I also have my enormous coffee as always. Which is a legal requirement for this live stream. Uh, and before we crack on with what I'm going to be doing today, I want to show you. Uh, I did finish off. I didn't finish it fully on the stream. But I did finish off. Finishing off. I did finish off the little walker that I was working on last stream. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. There we go, the uh, Imperial Guard uh, Sentinel Walker, which is now done. If you remember, I was doing it in a sneaky, sneaky, stealthy, crafty pose. So it's all sneaky, sneaky, stealthy, crafty. It's all squished down like it's just peeking, uh, peeking over a hedge or a wall or something. It was actually, the head was actually pointing down a bit when I, when I finished it. So what I had to do was be very brave and the glue hadn't fully set. It was almost set, but I was able to like bend the head back up again. Just had a love play in it. But I can bend it back up. So yes, it's being all sneaky, sneaky, stealthy. It's like, you know, when a cat is doing that thing where a cat kind of crawls towards the bird and it's going all, you can see its shoulders sticking up in the air. That's what this is doing. Its shoulders are sticking up. You see, it's like a it's like a two-legged cat with a grumpy dude inside and a lot of weapons. Yeah, kind of. So that was done. That's uh, been, that's all done and ready. That just needs to be painted up now. I have got the top removable. I discovered to my happiness, uh, although I can't get it off now, that it is possible to keep the top part of the of the, the hull here removable even after you've stuck the guy's arms on because at first I was like I don't know how I'm going to do it because I can't get I was trying to I was hoping I'd have to get the arms in and then try and glue them in while this frame was in place but I actually found that even though they stick out above the furniture inside the cabin you can actually pop it off I'm not going to do it now because I need to get the angle, angles right and stuff but you can actually pop it off for painting the dude inside so yeah brilliant I love that it's great so little sneaky sneaky Stealthy sneaky metal gear. Metal gear. That's that done. And of course I have now finished officially the Torox. I've not done the dudes yet. I've got to do the dudes, but the vehicle itself is now officially finished. Uh, and I did put up a video uh, a few days ago just explaining how to, how I did the weathering on this. Uh, and it's very straightforward. I basically did a little video about how to do weathering for tabletop models that you want to play using techniques that can withstand being played on the tabletop it's up at the moment for patrons uh, it should be available for everybody else the next day or two so stay tuned it'll be released from early access but yeah i did some i did some sort of um, some weathering techniques including powders i did powders as well uh, and you would think putting powders on something that you're going to be handling and putting in a transport box and moving around on the table is a bad idea. But it has been weathered with powders and other things. And it's looking nice and grubby. And that's pretty much... I noticed that decal's not straight. And I was like, oh, OCD. Ooh, made me mad that. So that's done. I'm weathered. And I'm really pleased with that. So yes, I've just got to do the two figures for that. The driver and the gunner. So I'll put those off to one side out of the way. Where's the way? I'll just put it out of the way. They're pleased with that now. Totally adorable. Tell me if I've put, have I pulled that off? Does that give that impression of sneaky sneaky? Have I got that right? It does to me, but tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I got it wrong. Right. That's what, uh, that's a little catch up for you. Uh, where are the tracks? Did they fall off? Says Paul at Team Inept. No, they're in the box. <laughs> um, let's have a look. 
Uh, James Lorimore says, Nim, did you ever watch the show called Nailed It on Netflix? Didn't you just ask him that and he answered it already? I'm sure he just did that. Uh, or was that somebody else? Um, no, the horses are on the tracks. Says James, I think they're on back order team inept. Damn, internet is playing up, keeps dropping. will no doubt mean, says Bory Models. We need an engineer and they won't be able to come till next week. Maybe after Christmas. Boo. That's not good. Who's your, who's your broadband with? You don't need to answer that. Uh, now, there was a question way back. Before we get going, there was a question from Jamie. Uh, and he says... Uh, he says, quick question. Uh, I asked this on the Monday's E-Models live stream, but what is the best way to paint an M16A1 rifle for a 116 scale figure? Uh, yeah, you did, he did ask the question on Monday. I haven't got a clue, because I've never painted an M16A1 uh, rifle. Uh, he wanted to know how to paint it to look realistic. And I think Sergeant Bones actually answered it, answered it pretty well. Oh, it might have been Sergeant Bones. I think somebody answered you pretty well and went through the colours. So I would say, Jamie, unless somebody in chat right now can, can tell you, um, just when this show is finished, just go and pop back to Monday's show on the E-Models channel and just have a quick look through again and just have a looky-see. Because I, I seem to remember somebody answered you in the chat fairly thoroughly. We didn't have a clue because we, we didn't know. So, uh, But if you do get stuck, it should be the chat's archive. You can go back and watch it. Right. Uh, hi, Vince, says Dave. And scale model muse. Oh, there. Are uh, we saying hi? Oh, there he is. Hi, Mr. Uh, hi, Phil. Afternoon, everyone. He says it's Vincent at Mr. Lowe's Model Making. Hello. I'm trying to. Everybody's saying hi to Vincent, but I can't see him anywhere. Also, hello, muse. Didn't see you there. Uh, does that mean Vamp is in as well somewhere? Paint the damn wedge. So, what are we doing today? Apart from me talking at top speed and not doing anything and forgetting to zoom out. Hang on. There we go. Uh, well, today we're going to work on or carry on working on the other thing that I got from Dad and Dave and uh, Kenneth and Scott, which is my Chimera, Chimera, my Imperial Guard Chimera. I might as well get this made and then I can have it ready for painting at some point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do something uh, and then we'll get going. Uh, one second, Focorinos. Right, so let's have a look inside the magic box. While I'm doing this, uh, don't forget, of course, I'm going to ask everybody, what have you been working on? What have you been up to? How are things going? What is happening on your workbench? Uh, and yes, I have got no decals in here, but I've taken them. Oh, I'll put them in here. Oh, there they are. I always put the decals in the instructions to keep them safe. So, uh, yes, so what have you been working on? What's on your workbench right now? What shizzle do you have on the bizzle? I don't know what that means. That's the lid. That won't fit in there, you fool. Uh, do, 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 do. Osric 9000, hello chums, welcome Osric. Uh, Muse says, not working today, going out later. Fox, fave air, what is it? Mine's clear. Fave air? I don't know what that means, James. Fave air. You might need to explain that. What's my favourite air? I don't know, there's air. I breathe air. Um, might want to explain that statement, a question even. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, gross models. I've been doing some MIG. Some little MIGs, yeah. You've got your little tiny MIG fighters going on. Earl D is detailing his real grade tall geese frame. Looks good. I've seen the picture. Uh, Dave is doing five ultra specimen from the blind boxes. Yay. Um... You said earlier, if I had a question, I could ask about air if I wanted. Huh? I don't understand. You've lost me. You've lost me completely, dude. If I had a question, I could ask about air. I don't know. I, I'm, am I just being special? I don't understand. You have to ask about air. I don't understand. I don't understand, dude. Uh, what is air? As Other than the thing we breathe, what, I don't know what you mean. You'll have to explain to me. I'm being special today. Uh, Nim is waiting for the sprue goo to dry on his bow. While that is going, I'm working on my Dragon Lancer Transient. Cool. Don't know what any of those words mean. <laughs> Bori Model says, Tamiya 135th Centurion, with first ever detail up kit, waiting for tools for the photo etch. Cool. I discovered today to my chagrin that um, my super glue, I pulled the lid off, and the little metal spike that's in the lid is now in the tube, and I couldn't get it out, so I had to throw that away. And I had a little tube of super glue that I couldn't get anything to come out, so I've got no super glue. That's 
not really apropos of anything. It's just talking a photo actually made me remember. <sighs> In the introduction, you said if we could ask anything about. Oh, not. Oh, I see. Oh, right. What's my. Uh, oh, now I'm being special. I do apologise. My favourite air is the one that's not full of, like, other people's trumps or diesel or. I don't know. My favourite air is the air you get when you walk past a, a kebab shop and you get that, or the curry shop and you get that smell of delicious foods. Delicious foods. How special wasn't that? I was being special there. Um, Lim Sindarin is clapping. Uh, Smooth saying hi to scale model Muse. Right, let's get some buildy buildy done now. I've only had a quick look, but I'm pretty sure that the constructions of this is going to be very similar to the Hydra, which I would show you, but it's in my uh, Crusade case or skirmish case somewhere. So I built the Hydra. So this bit seems fairly similar, I think, and then it's the back end that's different. Ooh, because uh, they're all kind of based on the same template. So this is a personnel transporter. Rather handily. There's no real interior I need to paint on this, so I can just, when I've built it, I can just crack on and paint it. So there you go. Because you're special, says Nim. Yes, I am. So, you can watch now as I mess up the tracks, probably. That's where I'm very special. And yes, this one has tracks. Where's Kenneth when I'm building something with tracks? You know what I mean? See, I go ahead and get, get something with tracks and start building something with tracks. He's not even here. Just, just because he's in Australia and asleep and it's the middle of the night. <laughs> no excuse. Ah, now left and right track assembly. We have the not numbered. Cool. So no numbering whatsoever. Fantastic. So all the tracks are on one sprue. Eine Sieglesbrunnen gefahren mit all the pieces. Do, 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 do. Uh, Dave says, Dad is probably working on a new super duper top secret modeling device. I would suspect so. He's working on a thing for Ted so he can he can paint models and drink gin at the same time with one handy device. Right, so we need that and that. So none of these are numbered, but hopefully, I'm going to guess it should be fairly straightforward because these are the older kits that were before the numbered things. Uh, and it often tends to be that the, the construction is so simple that it's not really a problem that they're not numbered. So we want one with a peg, one with a thole. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually I'm not going to use... For these parts, I'm not going to use my god hand nippers because they're far too expensive and hard to replace. I should use my citadel ones because these are quite thick gates and nubs. So how is everyone? How are you all? I hope you're all well on this windy, cold and miserable Sunday. It's bloody freezing out there. It's almost the time of year when I need to get my John Motson coat out again. Very much so, I fear. It's basically, it's my favourite winter, it's my proper full winter coat when it's like 100 degrees below outside and it's like snow and ice. And uh, I need I need thickness and wooliness. I've got basically a, 1970, a genuine 1970s car coat. Which is kind of that kind of suede stuff on the outside, not quite uh, Alcantara, but it's that kind of, you know, sort of stuff on the outside and slightly fluffy. It's wool lined and it's got all the the the, fl the wool on the inside, the fleece, or the, it's fake fur on the inside, and it's a sort of 1970s brown colour, and it's just it's got the the furred collar like a sort of Edwardian thing. It looks fantastic. Gaz Vickers says, morning all on hungover model making guru. I shall talk very loud at you then, Gaz. Put your speakers up full volume. Apologies if that cracked and horrible. I just had to do that. Uh, da, 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 da. So look, Vincent says, afternoon, Mike. Sorry, mate. Busy at the bench. Wonders if dad forgot about her birthday gift, says Muse. No Muse, I've posted it, honestly. Uh, Smooth said, had snow last night, but it's gone now. Time to put on my thick jumper. Yeah, I need to, I need to actually dig my one. I've got, I've got like two thermally things. I've got, I think, I've got a big, thick, woolly jumper that looks like something out like the 1990s, and it's just terrible. I hate wearing it because it's just, it just looks terrible, but it's warm. And I've got some kind of thermally vest thing, which, um, is like that thick 
and it's like a t-shirt but by god does it get you warm i don't know how it works it's dark magic or something right i'm not going to cut the tracks off yet because oh i've just seen something <gasps> i just realized it's got a dozer blade oh yeah i'll be putting that on you can bet your bottom dollar i'm putting a dozer blade oh yes i put one on that skitty remember that skitty i made because that was from the that was from the tank spare parts kit this is having a dozer blade just because it's a it's dozer, oh, yes right what am i doing i'm doing a thing i need to uh clean these off first clean them up uh, yes yeah, so I'll, I'll have to dig out my jumpers actually hang on you've had snow damn we haven't had snow yet i like snow now i don't have to, i've said it before but now i don't have to actually drive to a place of work i don't have to actually drive to an office or anything like that <clears throat> then uh, yes I, I like snow <laughs> yeah when you have to drive to a job snow's the worst thing in the world when you're actually self-employed like me snow's the best thing in the world if you don't have to go anywhere uh, i've seen me i've seen it me putting my bike thermal layers on when not riding the bike long johns and stuff yeah i haven't got anything like that I know it's winter when a I have to go into the into the sweat into the, the bit of the shelf where the sweater lives, uh, and you know after the thing is, basically I have to get the sweater out and then put it in the washing machine because it's got a years with dust on it and I'm like, Ugh. but also, uh, I know it's winter when I'm walking around with my jeans on underneath my jeans I've got my sloppy pajama pants and I just go out to the shops with jeans over them because it's an extra layer. I've got my heat holders, got my heat holder socks. Get yourself to Matalan and get a, pair, a few pairs of heat holder socks. They're fantastic. They're like not that expensive and they will keep your feet warm. Just a word of warning. You may fall down the stairs. Because <laughs> although the socks are nice and fluzzy on the outside and grip a little bit, the inside's a bit slippy. So you won't, you won't lose grip with the sock, but your foot might separate from the sock. So yeah, go downstairs carefully and slowly. <laughs> yeah, but they'll keep you warm. So as soon as I've got my heat holders on, and the sweater gets dusted off and put in the washing machine. Uh, and I'm wearing two pairs of pants, then I know it's winter. That's when it's winter times. Um, uh, Dave says, which that model says, I'm great. I've got two days off without having to stick my hand up in Turkey's rear end. I hate my job this time of year. I can imagine. I can imagine, dude. Um... I wear at least three layers during winter, says James. Crossfade King, welcome Crossfade King. I wish I was painting at the moment, too cold in my painting room. Get a little heater on there. Just get yourself a little space heater. Although the thing is, it's like electric heaters. Yeah, it's super expensive. I mean, I'm lucky in this room here. Uh, many, 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 many years ago, we had central heating put in. I need my nippers for that. Uh, we had central heating put in this house. Uh, but at the time, we couldn't afford much. So, uh, basically, because Dad retired, medically retired from work and got a big payout. So, uh, so we couldn't afford much. So we got central heating put in and we had two radiators, completely two radiators installed. One in the bathroom upstairs, which makes sense because you don't want to be cold in the bathroom because that sucks. And one in the hallway downstairs. Now, the problem is... There isn't one in this room, which sucks. So uh, it can get, it could, it would get a bit chilly in here because there's no, I guess a little bit of heat. If the doors are open all day, it does pick up some heat. But however, to my advantage, uh, having a computer on in here all day and sometimes having the Xbox on and a big LCD TV or LCD monitors for the computer well, not so much anymore because they're more power efficient, but in days gone by, they'd actually warm the room up right, quite nicely. You get nice toasty. But nowadays, of course, it's all energy efficient LCDs and things. Yeah, this room stays quite cold. <laughs> so it can be warm and toasty everywhere else in the house, but in here it can be a bit chilly. So if I get desperate, I'll just turn the Xbox on and have it off on in the background, just <laughs> warming the room up. But yeah, electric heatery is uh, not cheap. Uh, I've got a Challenge 2 MBT with a dozer blade the other day, says Nicholas Erickson. Cool. The only difference between real world tanks with dozer blades and Warhammer tanks with dozer blades is that Warhammer armour with dozer blades, 
The blades are purely for just pushing the enemy out of the way and running over them and squishing. I mean, they're obviously for obstacles as well, but they're also for just plowing into the enemy and making them into little chunks. Because, because Warhammer, obviously. Smooth says, I keep my giant bottoms on under my bike gear when it's blowing a hoolie. Yeah, actually, that's what I do. But what I'll do is, that's why I mentioned my heat holders. I'll have my heat holders on. But I'll get my jammy bottoms, which are like, you know, the you know the kind of thick, fluffy cotton things where they've got like a checkered or tartan pattern on them. And they're just like fluffy cotton slobby pants. I'll have them on, but I'll tuck them into my heat holders. So they make a complete sealed unit between my waist and my feet. So my, all the warmth in my feet goes up my trousers and just stays in, in the system. Uh, and then I'll put the jeans on over the top. Of course, the downside is uh, if you sit down too quickly, there can be consequences. Uh, and also, uh, if you go for a wee, it's a bit of fiddling going on to you get everything organised because you've got like several pairs of clothing that you need to negotiate. So it can come with challenges. Uh, Tyrone Key, hello everyone. Just been standing outside in cold and damp, setting, selling Christmas trees. Woo. Christmas tree. I can't sing that because of copyright. I'm moving away from that now. Don't know why I started singing that. Uh, Oh, Christmas tree. Isn't isn't the Canadian National Anthem also a song about Christmas trees? Du, 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 or something. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be right. Dad says, shoes won't fit now. I have three socks on, says James. Wait, you've got two feet. Shouldn't it be four socks? Have you got three feet? I don't want to know where you put the third sock. Ew! not something I need to know about. Now I can't remember if these edges get covered up. They might well get covered up. Which means the sanding is a complete waste of time. But hey. I know it's there. Hey, if you're in England. If you're in the UK, by the way. I have a meal idea for you. Now, because it's me, it's not complicated in the slightest. That's a bit of a bad sounding filing job there. Let me just go back and do all that again, because that was an absolute gash. Uh, it's not complicated, and it's truly multinational. Uh, what you want is you want to go and get a whole mess of really nice and big finger rolls. So hot dog buns. You kind of want to go to Tesco's, really, because there's where they got these things. Uh, then you want to get yourself some Polish hot dog sausages. I can't tell you what they're called because I can't remember and it, I can't pronounce it. But they're in the Polish section in Tesco's. Uh, and they're the ones that come in the, like, the little plastic skin. If each, each sausage comes in like a plastic skin. So you have to peel the skin off of each sausage. And when you do, the name of the brand is still on the sausage. It's like weird. It's really strange. Uh, get, so get some of these six, get a pack of the ten of those. Uh, you want a jar of proper German sauerkraut. Proper German sauerkraut, trust me on this. There's big jars of it like that big. Polish sauerkraut at a pinch, but German's better. Uh, and then the pièce de résistance, you want... Uh, a carton or a tub of uh, kosher dried onion bits. It's like dried chopped onion and it's fried and it's crunchy and it's kosher and it's just fantastic. So we've got a little bit of Poland, a little bit of Germany, a little bit of Israel. We've got a little bit of, uh, well, I don't know what, what you do for finger buns. Whenever. Finger buns aren't really a national thing, are they? So you've got a different cornucopia of countries there. And what you want to do is they will make, the combination of all that will make fantastic hot dogs because the sausages are fantastic, they're like that long. Uh, the sauerkraut makes a great replacement for onions and is less hassle. You just need to remember to get the sauerkraut and squeeze it out so all the juice gets out so it's not like soaking your buns. Don't get your buns wet, you were. Uh, and the crunchy onions just taste fantastic. There you go, there's my true multinational hot dogs. Although there's no hint of Americanism about them, obviously. Never mind, eh? 
Uh, do these bits actually get covered up? I don't. We'll find out in a minute. We'll find out in a minute. Because I've done a right bad job of sanding there. Just the right bit of gash that is. Why do people have to call me just when I'm busy with something? It says Rat Pack Thirty. Yeah, always the way. Aldi do nice brioche hot dog buns. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Because I like me a bit of brioche. We got some uh, brioche cho pan au chocolat the other day from somewhere. Can't remember where now. Uh, Kielbasa, kraut and mustard. Yum. Oh, yeah. Torox for me, says Dad, and next Dad's device. Candyman from Mongo. What model is everyone building? Oh, okay. I'm working on three Bandai Nico Busu armoured cat kits. They were awesome. And some science fiction miniatures I'm trying to paint completely. <laughs> cool. The Neko, Neko Busu. They look mint then. It's basically a cat in armour. Uh, we did. I did actually ask everybody that, but I guess you missed it. So everybody, feel free to tell Candy Grand for Mongo what you're working on. Do you know why I'm having trouble sanding this? It's just I've lost the ability to sand. I've got to tell you, last night I was doing some painting for the uh, for the Warhammer Conquest video, and could I had I suddenly lost the ability to paint? Good God, had I? Also, I'd lost the ability to film. It was like oh. So when you watch the Warhammer, the next Warhammer Conquest video, there's a little bit in there that just looks like it's been filmed by a five-year-old. It was just me. Everything, everything I know just went. I lost the ability to, you know, do anything, to paint or talk or film. I couldn't keep things in focus. The lighting wouldn't work. I couldn't paint. I've been a complete spoon. It was not good. Right, that was an incredibly slow process. I'll do faster with this one. I've got the sniffles as always. Let me blow my nose. Hang on. Oh, sniffles. Must be, must be tissue. Woo. Yeah. Turn the microphone off for a sec. Hang on. <sighs> right. Vincent says, I heard that fox brioche is not the same as pan au chocolat. No, it was brioche, a pan au chocolat. It said on the front, brioche, pan au chocolat. It was, it was a, a little brioche roll with, it, it was basically pan, pan au chocolat and, I know the difference, but it was both. It was like, wow, I, I'd get you the wrapper, but it's in the bin now, so. Uh, uh, one is very much spongy, whereas a pan au chocolat is uh, mille feuilles d'eau, mille feuilles, mille feuilles, mille feuilles. I can't read, I can't pronounce that. I, I should be able to pronounce French, mille feuilles d'eau. It said on the thing, pan au chocolat, brioche pan au chocolat. Don't blame me. Blame the people that you should blame, which are not me. Uh, why is it whenever I see candy man from Mongo, I fancy beans on toast, says Dad. How about some more beans, Mr. Tiger? I'd say you'd had about enough. <laughs> Uh, James built an RG Zaku earlier in the week. Uh, Nicholas Erickson fly, kind of says Flyhawk Panzer 2 Luchs in 170 second scale. Uh, Rat Pack 30 built a 135th Revel M48A2 working on programming the Arduino for it now. How come when I ask you what you're all up to, like three of you answer, and when, when somebody else asks, everybody tells them what. Do you know? I'll just, I'll just crack on with this and let you guys just hang on. I'll just let you guys get on with it. No, don't worry about me. I'll just, I'll be fine. <laughs> Only kidding. Uh, so I'm getting little nub marks. What am I doing wrong, says James Larimore. Uh, it depends. If, if you're getting little nub marks, if, if you've still got nubs, it just means you're not getting rid of the nubs. Uh, if you're getting depressions in the plastic... In fact, why don't I just show you on the next piece I take off? That'd be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Because I've kind of done half of these. Let me just get this sorted out. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm taking things off the thing and I'm denubbing them. Yeah. I'll answer you in a, in a second when I can do it on a new piece. Uh, 
Crossfade King is working on a 100th regulation centre version of the Nightingale Gundam, HG Kshatriya, and a Frame Arms Girl Baselard. Baselard? Is that Baselard? I guess not. it's not Baselard. Because that just sounds like a centrally located fat person. What, uh. Kyobasa sounds like a Chinese knockoff supper bike, or super bike, even, I guess. Dave, you and your spelling. I don't know. Is it your spelling or your typing? I'm not sure, but one of them. <laughs> Uh, uh, this weird, all this weird food, all that needs is Brennigan's crisps from Nom Nom Nom, says Gaz Vickers. Brennigan's crisps. Yeah. You know one fad I would like to see go away? Kettle chips. Kettle crisps. You know, the kind of, they're, they're horrible. They're just greasy, horrible nonsense. Give me normal crisps. On this kettle bottom crisp, larded our poncy bit of fruit in the top of your beer bottle nonsense. Just give me crisps. Uh, roast beef and mustard, says Crossfade King. Dad says, uh, uh, Gaz Vickers says, always. Right. Do, 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 do. Well, that was a complete nightmare. I seem to have forgotten the ability to how to do sanding and that. It's really weird. Uh, right, for the benefit of James and his nubs. If it was James, I've forgotten now. Uh, for tracks. Oh, no, not for tracks, for nubs. First of all, when you cut things off the sprue, uh, if you can, unless you're using like God hand nippers, basically you want to leave a little bit of the gate on the piece. Don't go right to the piece. I say, well, if you're using God hand nippers, then you don't need to do this bit. But if you're not using God hand nippers, you want to leave a little bit of the plastic sprue on the piece. Why do you do this? I'm I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see now, because I'll be miles away now. Hang on. Remember, you're watching this through a webcam, so it's not going to be fantastic. Right. Why do you want to do that? Well, uh, that's terrible. Hang on, let me zoom in. I mean, let me focus. Have it, have it. There we go. Perfect, spot on. <sighs> oh, so what we'll do as well. Hang on. My little centre point marker is there. Right, why do you want to leave a little bit? Because if you, unless you're using God hand nippers... Uh, then in, in reality what will happen most of the time is that when you your nippers go to the piece of plastic They a lot of the nippers won't just like snip neatly. They'll squash and crush the plastic like they'll go like that and crush it uh, And they'll either pull or they'll warp or they'll distort the plastic So if you go right to the plastic part and snip you'll take Potentially either take a gouge. Oh, it's not even on camera. You'll either take a gouge out of the plastic or you'll on a gumpler for example you'll you'll get that white straining so you've got a black or a blue gumpler piece and you get your clippers and you go right to the part and snip you may get a perfectly smooth cut but you'll have white stress marks because you've stressed the plastic so if you leave a little tiny bit of the, of the sprue then you won't stress the plastic then what you do is you take your very sharp each build needs a clean blade get a fresh blade for every build Next thing you do is, let's find one in the middle that I can hold. Uh, you want to, again, if you're using God hands, you can now move in a little closer. And even if you're not, you can trim it down a little bit, but don't go again. Still don't go right down to the plastic. If you're using God hands, you can just go right to the plastic straight away when you take it off the sprue. Next thing you do is get your knife and you want to get rid of the nub that remains. And this is a little less stressful, should be, than using your nippers. But what you want to do is, you don't want to go like this, gouge, and take the whole thing out straight away. <clears throat> I need to clear my throat, hang on. Yeah, you don't want to get rid of the whole thing straight away, because if you go like that and gouge the whole thing out, all you'll do is gouge a trench into the surface, and again, you'll either have stress marks, or you'll have a big dimple in the surface. What you want to do is shave that nub away. Now I do this towards myself, you shouldn't really do that. If you can do it away from yourself, go for it. I can't do it very easily, so I prefer to do this way. And I'm just shaving a little bit of the nub off. I'm not going to the bottom of the nub. 
if you imagine, here's the plastic surface and here's the nub. I'm not going like this because that's where you go gouge and take about what I'm doing is I'm going slice, 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 slice. I'm taking it down a little bit by little bit. Uh, so we'll keep going there. Which sure remains shot, yes. So you sl you slide in that you're slicing that down very, very slowly. I brace my thumbs and fingers like this so I can't stab myself in the thumb. Sorry, sorry everybody who wants me to stab myself. Now you won't get rid of it completely, but you'll get it down a lot of the way. I tend to turn if you've got like if you find you're going like one side is a bit higher than the other, just slowly turn it around and work the other way. So you've got rid of most of it. Now what I tend to do, and this is my handy tip, I tend to use a file. Now this is an old DIY store file. It's old and it's not that sharp. I don't know what grit it would be, I've got no idea. But what I do is, with no pressure whatsoever, I work on that just to get it flat. Now no pressure at all, go slowly. And the trick is to go in one direction. Now I don't mean permanently because what you'll see now is I'm going to turn around and go the other way. What I mean is come at it from different angles but whenever you're moving the file don't go like this. Just go forward, forward, forward. There's no backstroke. I'm not pulling it backwards. If you go like this you're just mangling the surface up. If you go in one direction you're flattening it but by varying the direction you come from you're, you're filing over the filing marks and you're kind of blending them in together but the trick is to go with as little effort a little pressure as possible because the trick here the first bit with the knife is to get rid of the nub the second bit is just to get everything flat so you want to use a metal file because that doesn't bend okay so that's nice and flat now on most pieces of plastic what you want to do if it's big enough is go from that direction and then that direction and then maybe go diagonal what i also tend to do is to kind of go diagonally like that so you cover a lot of surface area and it's really you're making scratch marks that way and then scratch marks this way and then scratch marks that way and you vary them so although you're making scratchy marks with the blade you are right you're going over them each time and it's kind of just making them more confused and less obvious if you just go in one single direction all the time you'll just have lots of scratches going that way so that's been done next we go in with uh, this is 120 grit this is a bit small unfortunately but what i would do is i would then very gently Again, not too hard. Sand over that in a circular motion like this. Because it's flat now, I just need to get rid of the sanding marks. So go with the circular motion to sand that flat. I should have done something bigger, really. And again, go with the sanding motion here with the circular motion. And again, go from multiple directions. And the reason you're doing this circular motion is because the aim here is not to flatten it but to again add lots of little micro scratches that are on all directions so they kind of just become a texture rather than scratches so remember this is coarser than this so this will leave scratches this will sand those scratches away and then when that's done going with an even finer sanding stick this is a what i don't know Paul at UMP never labels them, so I don't know what grit this is, but it's very soft and spongy. And this is where you just now go in and just go backwards and forwards now. And the purpose of this layer of sanding is to sand away the marks that this has left. And by the end of it, what you should have... Now, I know it won't come out on camera. There's a little bit of cleanup needs to be done anyway. It won't come out on camera at all, but what you should have is a part where there's no evidence of the nub at all there's no nub mark left behind there's no stress fractures you may see it's possible you may see if you're painting it don't worry about stress fractures or, or little white marks because if you're painting it as soon as you prime it and paint it you won't see those all that matters is that it's smooth it's just it, if you're not painting your gumpler then unfortunately having stress marks is kind of inevitable but that's where filing with the the file comes in <clears throat> sometimes what i'll do is and i can't really show you on this but say i've got a, a panel on a gumpler that's got a stress mark on it i'll just i'll just file it until i've gone 
just below the stress mark because it's only surface on the surface. If you if you file it enough, you will file down to below the stress the stress mark, and then you can just bring it back. And the trick is with sanding, start off with a rough grit or with that, and work your way up the grits. So that could be that could be 80 grit technically, that could be 120 grit, that might be 1200 grit. Work your way up because this files things down and gets rid of nubs. This gets rid of all the sanding marks. This gets rid of all the marks from that. And this gets rid of all the marks from that. And then I could go finer again. And if you're not painting your gumpler, once you've done this, go for a finer one and a finer one and work you up to two, three, four, five, or six thousand grit. Eventually you'll be polishing and you'll have a nice smooth shiny surface. So there you go. It's all about if you if you get invisible nub marks, it's either you haven't got rid of the nub or you just need to do a bit more sanding and, and prep. To, or, um, or it's just you need to take them off the sprue and leave a bit so you're not making stress marks there you go that took a lot longer than i thought uh what did chat do while i spent half an hour explaining that uh that was uh what have we done james says turkey stuffing with turkey in in and a buttload of ham buttload is a real measurement yep Vincent of Mr. Lair says, right, off to do some stuff. Be back later if you're still live. Later, everyone. See you later, dude. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Canada has a brand of crisps called Old Dutch, says Candy Brown for Mongo, that have awesome flavours. One more reason to love Canada. There's always a reason to love Canada. Uh, just spent a couple of, just spent 10 minutes at the door, a couple of blokes trying to convince me that brown bread is better than white bread, flipping Hovis witnesses. Ugh. Hello. Smooth off to do some festive at trickery. Have fun all. Thanks for coming in, dude. Uh, James says, thank you, Fox. Yep, no worries, mate. It really is a case of it's either how you take them off the sprue or it's how you sand them back. It's the most tedious thing you can do on a gumpler, but just take your time. Always start with a nice fresh blade. Uh, I, I can't give you any grit on this because it's, it's just an old screwdriver. But it's not, it's not particularly... It's quite old, so it's kind of smoothed down a bit anyway. Right, so I've got to do all the tracks, now, haven't I? Uh, so it doesn't tell me what numbers. Just here's a load of tracks. You need to do all these. Thanks. So I'm going to assume. So I've got two of those. Wow, well, you get you get to. Oh, I've got to unzoom, haven't I? Uh, I forgot that bit. There we go. So now you've got to sit and watch me do sand a load of tracks. Wow, that's going to be fascinating. Fascinating. Now the advantage I've got here is I'm using God Hand Nippers, which are so good, I can actually cut right to the piece. Because not always, but sometimes, they can give you a nice smooth cut and not stress the plastic. It's not guaranteed, but more often than not, they don't explode. Uh, so we need a one, a two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, six oneers. It'll Lego this. Six oneers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Six oneers. Oops, locking the microphone, sorry. I bet that's dead loud, that. Oh, God, there's no way to put this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six. It's almost individual track links. Almost, but not quite. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need one, two, two tours. So let's find some tours. There's two tours. It's like a Lego, isn't it? Do 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 do. And I mean, when I say one and two, I mean the number of tracks on the piece. I really can't do this without knocking the microphone, so I'm going to do it this way. Uh, one of those. Yeah, so using these goddamn nippers just saves me so much time. And I have one, one, two, is that a three or a four? That's a one. Uh, okay, I've only got literally those two days. So it's a four. Four. Fauna and fauna. <laughs> mm. I never said my jokes were good. Let me know if I can get my head in shot, by the way. I've kind of lost track of where everything is. Do, 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 do. 
And I'm hungry now. I'm talking about food all the time. I think that's all the ones I need now. I think. Uh, Ghost Lion is in. Pineapple. Welcome, dude. Uh, you live where you've been. I have no idea, says Ghost Lion. I'm still queen, says James Lorimer. You've been demoted to court jester, James. Fair enough, says James. Lol. Okay, right. So let's get these tracks prepped and ready. So again, because I'm on the god handings. I mean, you don't need god hand nippers, but if you can get them, I do recommend them because they are kick ass. They do save you a lot of time. There's there's a lot less I need to sort of scrape away with the knife now because I can go in like this and just go ding and take the nub off, no problem, and it won't it won't stress. It'll leave a little tiny stress mark, but because I'm painting this, life's a lot easier. And that's one other thing as well. If the whole thing with nub marks only really applies to people that make gumpler, they're not going to paint. If you're painting a model, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there's a little white stress mark anywhere. As long as it's smooth, that's all that actually matters. If you're painting a model, nobody cares if there's a little white mark because nobody's going to see it. Let's have a little bit of sanding to do, but not much. Oops. I'm really hungry now. I'm just talking about crisps and food. And I'm hungry again. Do, do, do. Good thing about those hot dogs I mentioned earlier on, by the way, because you get me packs of like 10 or 12 or something, those Polish hot dogs. We had hot dogs for tea last night. Guess what we're having for tea tonight? Yeah, because there's loads of hot dog left over from that we didn't use. So have to have hot dogs again tonight. Yeah, kick ass. Sauerkraut and dried onion. Dried kosher onions. And I was trying to figure out if anybody, anybody out there can answer this question. How do you get kosher onions? I'm assuming it's whatever, however, because they're, they're like dried and fried. So it's like a snack food, but you can sprinkle it on. You like pre-cooked, pre-fried. I'm assuming it's whatever they're fried in is kosher, not the actual onions themselves. Because is that, have I got that right? Is that, am I misunderstanding that? They also had like kosher candles. And I'm like, how do you have kosher? How can a candle not be kosher? It's just beeswax, isn't it? If you make a beeswax candle. So again, if anyone can clarify that one for me, I'd be fascinated. So we just need to very gently scrape off the excess bits here. I can go quickly because I got rid of most of it uh, with my god hands. Apart from that one, gosh darn it. There we go. He needs the ultimate sandwich, says James. I don't know what that is, but I like the sound of it because it has the word ultimate. Therefore, I clearly need to apply that to my entire face. Right, so I'll do I'll do the scrapey scrapey first, and then I'll do the uh, uh, get this man a sandwich. I shall head off to the wiki and find out for your model making guru, says Nim. Cool. I just don't know. I'm, I know what kosher means. I just didn't know how it relates to fried onions. Crispy fried onion bits and candles. I'm like, really? I'm guessing there must be something used in the creation of candles, for example, that involves animally products. Which would then make sense. <laughs> I noticed that the onion bits, the dried fried onion bits, would with included palm oil. So I assume that they're fried in palm oil rather than any kind of animal fats or anything like that. So But then I felt bad for the orangutan, so but they did taste nice. Mm. Very nice. What, do? what makes something kosher, says James Lorimore. It's it's a it's a how it's prepared. Uh kosher meat and fish and stuff uh, uh, kosher meat and stuff it's how it's prepared along uh, I can't remember the specifics of it anybody Jewish in the audience do do tell us because I can't remember the specifics um, in, in principle but not in actuality it's a similar idea to halal food in Islam you know, it's, it's the way the, the the meat is prepared, the way the animal product is prepared. It's in accordance with, I guess, in uh, Judaism, it's in accordance with the Talmud. In the same way, kosher is 
in accordance with the guidelines laid out in the Quran. So I would guess if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm just I'm kind of guessing here. Okay, that's little nubby nubs. Nubby nubs be gone. Our local Tesco's used to have a great um, kosher section. Used to have a massive kosher section. All kinds of foods, and they'd be fantastic because they were really nice. And half the time, you didn't know what they were because it was all you know written in Hebrew on the tin. It's like, wow, I don't know what any of that is, but I need to eat it all. And they had—I can't remember what it was—but they had these tins of stuff that was the densest food I've ever known, but it tasted fantastic. And I've, to this day, I've no idea what it was. But now they've just gone down to like one, almost one single shelf, and it's like, Ugh. and it's mostly just here's some crisps and some. Like there's onion bits and stuff, and it's like, oh, that's kind of boring. Uh, scale model muse says humane killing. Yes, I think it's, it's to do with that. It's all in the in the preparation of the um, uh, the killing of the animal. Uh, the way it's slaughtered. Yes. Stick a question with answer sense. Says David Butch. That model. Cool. Brilliant. Did you include your name and address? <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's to do with the way the food is slaughtered. Or when I say, I was trying to be nice and say prepared. Yes, yeah, slaughter. There you go. Now, I'm a carnivore, so I'm not. I'm not squeamish about saying the way the animal's prepared, i.e., slaughtered. Similar kind of principle to um, halal. Do do do. Not forgetting, of course, in Judaism, there are also forbidden things that aren't you're not allowed to eat. So it also tells the person buying it that it doesn't contain the unclean foods. As a butcher, I'm staying out of the debate, says butcher that model. <laughs> yeah, I, there's no debate. I, I'm just curious. I was just curious as to what the uh, what it was. I kind of I didn't used to know. It's just been so long since I to think about it because I'll eat anything. Me, I don't care. Right, Sunday time. Do, 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 do. I would eat any animal except the dog, says Ghost Lyle. Yeah, it's a very Western view, that, isn't it? If you had to, if you had no choice and you were starving. <laughs> There's not a lot of work to do on these because all I need to do is sand it down a little bit because they are tracks uh, and this is an Imperial Guard vehicle. So it's going to be battered and the tracks are going to be rusty and there's going to be mud. So it doesn't really matter that it looks a bit rough around the edges because there's going to be mud and stuff everywhere. Hamster says Osric 9000. Damn, not a lot of meat on a hamster. I'd eat anything, mate. I'll, I'll try anything once. I've said it before. I'll try any food ones. Bugs was nice. I had my crickets. They were quite pleasant. Mealworms, they're quite nice. I did try scorpion once at, uh, at an Australian restaurant and bar. It was quite nice. I was supposed to wear a t shirt and never got it. Gets. They closed down after a while. Never did get me free t shirt as a prize. I was like, what? Free t shirt for just eating that? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. There you go. Nom, nom, nom. Gone. Thanks. T-shirt, please. What? It's just a sweet, crunchy on the outside, squishy on the inside. What? I have dogs. They like steak, says Candy Grand for Mongo. I can't imagine a life without bacon, says Scale Model Muse. Yeah. You want your real mind blown. You're trying to imagine a life without bacon or coffee. <laughs> you, just, you just wouldn't want to live. There'd be no reason to go on. Do, do, do. Although I have to admit, I have to admit, when I had my hot dogs last night, I did have a good big cup of tea with them. It seemed only right to have a cup of tea. I don't know why. And not coffee. I don't know why. It just seemed correct. My dog likes liver, says Ghost. Like, I like liver. I like all meats. Well, I like all meats that I've had. <laughs> okay. That's that there. So I don't need to worry too much about these tracks. Like I said, I'm not going to get them like showroom quality and worry about mold lines and stuff because they are going to be battered and weathered and covered in gunk and, and I don't even know if you'll see these bits. Um, they are going to be battered and rusted and covered in mud and dirt. So it's going to be fine. 
My mum's golden doodle is more spoiled than me and my brother even were. The dog gets her own slice of apple pie on holiday, says Nim Cinderin. I want, like, labradoodles and stuff like a real pain in the arse or something. We've got one near us and it's got the stupidest bark. It's like, boo, boo, boo. It barks like that. Boo. And uh, it's just a pain in the arse. It barks non-stop. I just want to go out and shoot it with a, like, brick. A little piano or truck or something. The best meat is Springbok, says Team Inept. Oh, yeah. Not had that. I've had uh, Wagyu. I think a lot of people have had Wagyu. Wagyu was nice. Uh, had ostrich. That's kind of common. That's not that rare. I had crocodile, which was it was alright. It was a bit wasn't the best. Crocodile's weird because like it starts off if you get a burger, it starts off pink, and when you cook it, it's still pink, and you think I can't eat that. It's not cooked, but it is. It just doesn't. It's weird. It's it's the third meat. <sighs> I thought it was Tony, not the Labradoodle, that made that noise. <laughs> no, Tony also makes that noise occasionally. Uh, Tony's a Withenshaw lad. Tony's like, hey. That's the noise Tony makes. Hey. David Butch, that model says, Big debate going on at the moment. I want a pet mouse as I have space for a little cage on my bench and it will be nice to have a little friend at the bench. She who farts is having none of it. Because it's a mouse. Ugh. Uh, well, you give her a choice. You could suggest, well, look, I really want a mouse, but if you're not keen on a mouse, then you could quite happily have, say, ants. Ants are cool. Ants are fascinating. Ask Vincent about ants and Kenneth. I'll tell you all about ants. Get her watching Ants Canada. And then if she really doesn't like the idea of ants, then you can trade up and say, well, okay, well, how about a mouse then? Okay. Uh, get a ferret then, says Nim. Yeah. Then she'd suddenly re then she'd suddenly regret not allowing you have a mouse. Uh Candy Ground from Mongo says, Springbok sounds great. Venison is very nice. I've had caribou, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, caribou. I'd have a bit of that. I've had venison. Venison, again, isn't that uncommon, really. It's, that's kind of a not exciting meat. Uh, animals that are small near the land... Oh, animals that small near the sanding dust. Bad idea. It will die from that. That's a good point, dude. That is a good point. You don't want to really expose animals to your dust and spray. Or anything from your model making either. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so that's a good point. It's a very good point. You don't want to harm the animal. Doodle -doo -doo. Also, it should be said, keep in mind, um, mice can be semi-nocturnal or if not nocturnal completely which means they're really adorable except you're trying to get to sleep and it's rolling around on its whizzy wheel and just making loads of noise yeah you'll hate it within a week get a worm get a slow worm slow worm's cool i actually found a slow worm at work once I used to work on industrial estate and i found this thing i was like what's that in the corner there open the bay door for the unit and it was like there's a snake and I looked at it and thought, it's not a snake because it's too small. It's not a, it's not an adder. It's not got diamonds on its back. It's not a grass snake because it's brown. And it's also not doing the tong thing. It's not a snake. What is it? So I picked it up and it was a slow worm. I'm like, oh, wow. It's not that long it was. It was, it was totally adorable. It was whizzing around in my hand. I was like, wow, this is awesome. So I went I went to uh, release it on the grass. I was like, how did a slow worm get in the middle of an industrial estate? Never mind. Do you get a pet slow worm? They're kind of cool. Uh, you can get a mouse and die, it's fertile like a tiny panda. Oh. Uh, where are we? Uh, a rat, says uh, Chris. A rabbit is pretty good, says Ghost Lyle. You could just suggest a snake, says Nim. But then you have to feed it the mice, so you still got the mice coming into the equation. Uh, Osric 9000 has two snakes. What kind of snakes have you got, dude? Well, a tarantula it is, then, says Dave. Yeah, tarantulas. I've actually held a tarantula, and they are awesome. I don't like spiders. But I've held a tarantula. I, I don't like spiders, but I know they are awesome. And I'm the kind of person that I will, I, I will always throw one out if I can. I I'll, I'll never want to kill one. I just want to throw them out. But but uh, yeah, I've held a tarantula. It was the most amazing thing ever. It was like that big. 
it was it was bright silver with orange knees, an orange knee tarantula. Strangely enough, it had orange knees. It's about this big, and he put it on my hand, and it was like it was there on my hand, and it was just moving like that, and it was so delicate. It was like it was just so light. It was like I was I had a cloud walking on my hand. It was weird. It felt dead delicate. It was beautiful, and I was like, this is amazing. Uh, what else are we doing? We had 18 snakes, 20 tarantulas, and 9 lizards at the old house, says Dave. Flipping act, dude. Blimey, Riley. That house must have stunk. Ghost Lion only sleeps for four hours a day. I've got 20 cats, says James Lorimore. James, you need to not have 20 cats. You can't be your age and be the old cat lady. Especially because you're not a lady and you're not old. Tyrone Key says, get a cockroach. Yeah. I held a hissing cockroach in my hand. Again, same hand, animal handler. I used to work for a cable company and they had a guy from Discovery Channel turn up and he had a load of animals with him and we were like interacting with them all. Fruit bats and all kinds of things and all kinds of bits and bobs. So I held a hissing cockroach, which was quite nice. It was actually quite delicate. Uh, Nim says, I've got a cat because I can't have pets in my apartment. He's staying at my dad's house and he's not willing to give him back. Well, there you go. I would have got a tarantula, but I was overruled, says Osric. Rat Pack 30 says, rats are fun and they are great pets. I had so many rats at one point. Dogs are cool. If I get one, I want a corgi. For the moment, I'll stick with my fat cat. Yeah, rats are supposed to be very good pets. They're very smart, very clean. Uh, Tyrone Key said his teacher had a tarantula in class. Cool. Okay, get whatever you want for you to zoo, for your zoo. Just keep it away from the bench room, says Scale Model Muse. Yeah, you don't really want something like that can inhale the dust and crap that you're putting out because it'll just die um you get ants dude ants are your friend you get ants they live in a little plastic tub get some plastic tubes there you go get some ants get an ant farm going everybody likes ants ants are awesome go and watch ants canada right we're making things now shut up uh i've done nothing today done nothing nothing apart from a little bit of sanding uh, so we have some shears in that. So that is that one. That needs to go on. Line up the holes, Fox. Line up the holes. It's not complicated. It, 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 it is complicated. It's very complicated. Because it's not that way around. Oh. Yeah. The, so what you're basically telling me do you know? Oh, this is why they should should have numbered the parts back in the day. This, this totally don't match up. All it says is you want a bit with the holes and a bit with the spikes. So you do a bit with the holes, a bit with the spikes, and of course it doesn't work because it's the wrong one. Oh, it makes me mad that sometimes. How did they? Oh, how did they get? And it was these two here. So it was both. It was there and there. And you think, well, those two are the right ones. No, it's that one and that one you want. Because if you look at that, it's that one. Oh, that's so that's so annoying, that. If you're not going to number your parts games workshop, that at least makes sense when you put them on the screw. Oh, middle class numbering part nonsense. Oh, that is so annoying. Because if you've got a sprue and you literally that bit and that bit, you think they'd, they'd be the... No. That's made me grumpy now, that. Oh, don't mind you're not numbering your track, your parts, as long as you put them in the sensible place. You spoons! I'll tell you what, though. Did anyone else see that and think of a World War II uh, British Matilda tank? Matilda. Really is kind of that kind of tank, isn't it? With the slots in the side and stuff. It's just got that look to it. Oh. An ant farm, can you imagine the hassle of making an ant too much like hard work? Milking an ant even. Yeah, you don't get anything out of an ant farm. It's not a resource. I don't know. Do 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 do. Why don't you just get a why don't you get a fish? Get a little little fish tank. You just get like a couple of little tiny fish and a little fish tank like that big. You get a little tropical fish tank like this big. They're like kind of that size and you get a couple of little tiny tropical fish, it'd be sweet, they keep you company. Or you could just leave food out and then you'll definitely get mice free of charge. Of course, you're a penny. <laughs> mm. This live stream needs more Ted, says Paul. Yeah, I 
I can't do co-op on my live streams. Unless I do a hangout. Uh, what's for lunch, Lyle? Says James. So my hobbit friend, what are you having for third lunch, Ghost Lyle? Says Nim. We have three fish tanks already, says Dave. Oh, okay. Do you know? Why don't you... What else can you get for your workbench? It's got to be something that isn't going to breathe in all the crap that you, you dust and shit. Because that's a good point. It is a good point. You don't want animals breathing stuff in. Oh, that's tough. Uh, oh, I better write mess of that. Hang on. Before I gouge it. I like to gouge it, gouge it. I had a fish with no eyes. We called him Fish. I'll get me coat, says Dad. That's an old joke. And you know what? When you make that joke, what do you call a fish with no eyes? Nobody ever gets it until you go Fish. And they all go, oh, because it's so obvious. You could just get an electronic pet. You can get a Tamagotchi. Why don't you just like... Why don't you just, just get Pokemon Go on a, on a tablet and have that permanently on? Then you could have many pets. I'd be tempted to get back into Pokemon Go apart from I can't be asked going outside. It's, no. Middle-aged man walking along going, Oh, look, Pikachu! No, it's not, not, it's not cool, is it? I went through that phase. I did it for a little while. It was me and my friend Nikki, and um, she had two young boys. She, had, like you know, they were less than a couple of years old, so she used to go out for like a walk with them in their stroller. So we'd go out and we'd, we'd both play Pokemon Go. So we'd go out, take the kids out for a walk, and I'd just be playing Pokemon Go and sit in the little parky area, giving the kids some fresh air and uh, yeah, catching. Well, it was always Pidgeys and Rattatas, basically. Occasionally you get uh, that one that hypnotises the... Uh, what's it? The little yellow thing that kind of goes like that with its hands and it had the trunk and it's hypnotised. I called it Kiddie Fiddler because I renamed them all. I called it Kiddie Fiddler, but whatever it was anyway, that one. The only ones you ever seem to get around my way. Uh, but after a while I kind of got, I kind of got rid of it. Because it was killing me battery on my phone. But back in them days, it was an iPhone 5, you see. Uh, Drowsy says, yeah, that's the one, Drowsy. And I would be tempted to get Pokemon Let's Go for the Switch. I just don't have a Switch. <laughs> so it's non starter for a start. Because I did quite enjoy it. It was quite good catching it. I'd, I've, got no, I've got no investment in the Pokemon franchise. I've never, never played any of the Pokemon games. I did watch a bit of the original first series of Pokemon. It was like, okay, it's kind of cool. And just downright silly. But, uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed Pokemon Go. In Scotland, if you leave your home, you get slagged. Slagged. What does that mean? Explain this Scottish slang that I don't recognise. I just got Pokemon Sun, says James Romore. Uh, for dinner, Rat Pack says, you heat up a couple of pita breads, fry some chopped hot dogs. In this case, it's cheese-filled hot dogs. An onion at the end you put in chilli sauce. And when it's all heated up, you put in the pita along with corn. Mmm, easy, cheap and good. It's my favourite kind of food, easy, cheap and good. Well, my favourite kind of food is I phone a little man and he turns up with food for me. That's my favourite kind of food. And I've still never had Runzas or poutine. Two things I need to try at some point. In Scotland, uh, I just got Pokemon Sun. Yeah. I just got Pokemon Sun saying James. T Paul at Team and Ep says what's on page three. James, of course, being an American, won't get that. Fail. Honestly, Paul. Slagged, insulted to great. Oh, I see. You mean slagged like slagged off. 
You missed the G out. That's why I wasn't sure. Do you mean if you just go outside the house, you get slagged off? Do you mean if you just leave your house for five minutes? Which bit of Scotland do you win? Uh, right, so that goes together thusly. Because that's the right piece now. Thanks, Games Workshop. It's amazing what happens when you actually get the right piece. I mean, who, put, who puts a piece there and a piece there and they're not actually... And it's it's got to be that one and that one. I mean, it's... Oh. I only make jokes about widges, says Paul. I think you'll find I do not make booby jokes. That's dad. Oh, he's in Glasgow. Ah, oh, I eat well. There you go. My dad came from Glasgow. Okay, well, let's get that insertitated. Insertitated. Uh, is that going to be a horribly pushed fit, or is it going to be a real hard to push together job? If, I don't even need to glue that. That is so. That's just such a tight fit. It's such a tight fit. I don't even need to glue it. But I'll put a little bit of glue on there anyway. A wee little tiny bit of glue. If you painted the widge, that will be far easier than this complex building process. Yes. But you know what? You wouldn't see any hot widge action because all you see the back of my head because it'd be tiny. Oops. I mean, because it's a tiny figure. You and your widge fantasies, honestly. Doo -doo -doo. Right, there's a lot of dust and dirt on there. Let's get a stiffer brush. Who uh, 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 Or drawing a warhammer, says Chris. Because you're getting your face all up in the widge, weirdo. Shut up now. <laughs> uh, yes, I was. I, I actually forgot. I was going to try and get the a warhammer sketched out, ready for me to draw uh, today. And I totally forgot to sketch it because I was busy doing other stuff. So I'll try and remember for next week. Next week, if I remember to do the sketchy sketchy first, we'll try and do an actual drawing of a war hamster. Okay, so this is this one. I've just built the other one. I've just... Okay, I'm not actually sure what's happening now. Uh, that's that one there. So that needs to go there. Yeah, so all that sanding I did on those nubs is completely not needed because they all disappear down there. Huzzah! So just so you know, you need to get rid of the nubs so it fits. You don't need to sand them. Now, what a lot of people do is a lot of people leave these tracks on the sprue and then paint them and then glue them on afterwards. I'm hardcore. I don't know that nonsense. Uh, painting these on the model is not going to be a problem. It's not going to take much hard work to get it painted don't panic so that goes i do like the way these go together uh, hum drink hum dink and a bit hum dink and a beetroot you need paint on the brush i should remind you every three hours every 30 minutes don't slack i don't know what we're talking about now afternoon more hamsters says adster welcome adster i just banged my foot now i need to make sure that fits first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a tour and the tour goes here, like that, you see. And then a wanna should go in here, like this, you see. He shoots, he scores. Get in, you beauty. I think we can glue those in now. Oops. And the beauty is I can just, of course, splob the glue in there like that. And that will run down the gap and be more than enough to hold all these in place. I always like to get at least the first couple of bits in just so I know I've got the top one in the right place. <clears throat> now when I did the uh, the Hydra or the anti-aircraft tank thing that does actually number the parts and it also has little numbers on the backs of the tracks. So you know it's like one, two, three, four, so that's, that's quite good. Bit of glue in there, a little bit of glue in there, down that gap. <coughs> right, that's those three. So next up, we need another one to go there. It's quite clever, it's just straight pieces, but it, it works really, really well. And we need a four to go on there, like there, do you see? So we can glue that one in. 
Again, it's Tamir extra thin, so it just snicks down into the gap and welds the plastic together. So you don't need a lot. Don't need to go crazy. It's not a fast process, but then again, it's not like building a trumpeter tank with 5,000 track parts. But technically, it's almost individual track links, but not quite. Coffee. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Uh, I have a note from my mum. Says Zadstick, because somebody told him he was late. Uh, Dave said, "I knew that." Fo I, uh, pff, I'll start again. I knew that fox. The rhino is. Hang on, I need to clear my throat again. Ah, the only downside to not smoking. <laughs> well, there is no. That is the only downside. Dave says, I knew that fox, the rhino is the same part, but you look like you was having fun and I did not want to spoil it. Oh, it means about having this. Oh, so annoying. So annoying. Like, don't make, don't put, oh. Right, that needs to go on there like that. And then it should be. Big fella here goes like this, you see, like that. Oh, uh, no, no, no. We don't think so. You go there like that. That one goes in there like that. It's a really simple way of doing tracks. And really quite cool. There you go. But they do have the advantage that you don't really see any of the road wheels or anything. It's just a, a sealed unit, so. A bit of gloop to do. Do, 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 do. Yes, I have got built a Hydra. Hydra is the, is the Hydra or the other name it's got, which is the anti-aircraft thing, which is basically the same tank chassis. I've got that to be painted up as well at some point. And I do have an Lehman Russ. Wait, have I built that thing yet, that Hydra? Uh, no, I haven't even done it yet. Simpleton. Not even, not even start. It was the Lehman Rust that I built. See, I've got a Hydra as well. The anti-aircraft thing. It's the Hydra or something. Uh, Dad says, Accrington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. Me mum says, if you don't if you don't drink your milk, you'll end up like... You'll end up, well, what's the advert? Uh, me mum, me mum says, if you don't drink your milk... You'll end up playing for Accrington Stanley. Accrington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. An old milk advert. Outside the UK, you won't have a clue what we just talked about. Uh, there are four lights. Green light. Chelsea grows. What are we talking about now? Uh, are we talking about football? In my live stream? Oh. It's not acceptable. We don't do football in this house. Honestly, don't have football in my chat. God damn it. Purge. Exterminatus. Good God. Got a bit of clue there. Fox, you need a Bane Blade. I will get a Bane Blade one day. I want to get a Bane Blade. <clears throat> Uh, I will do eventually. I've got so much. I'd, I've got so much I need to build. It'd, be, it'd just disappear into the stash and never be seen again. Uh, I will get a bane blade at some point. I want to get a bane blade. I also want to at some point get um, one of the big tanks for my uh, what do you call it? Death Core Krieg. But I've got ten Death to Death Core of Krieg troopers, infantry guys. But I'm waiting to see how the build is for them. Because they're resin, and they're not the highest of quality. Because it's an old, it's an old set now, so they're a bit ropey. They're a bit soft in detail here and there. So I'm going to see what they like to build and paint. And if I quite enjoy it, and if I can make them look mint and not just like flumpy marshmallow people, because some of the details are a bit soft, uh, then what I'll do eventually is get myself some of the. Uh, some of the tankage for the Death Curry Krieg. Because some of the big tanks that are based on the uh, 
uh, what do you call the thingy Bane Blade the, on the Bane? Oh no, some, actually no, sorry, get it wrong. Sorry, they're not. Some of the big tanks for the Death Corps are actually just completely resin. They're all not based on the Bane Blade at all. But yeah, there's uh, the Machinar Machinarius pattern tanks or the Machinarius pattern. They look quite mint. But again, they're all resin, and I'm not the biggest fan of resin, so I need to be happy that I'm happy to build it. Because I've not actually built any Forge World Resin. Have I built any Forge No, I've not actually built Forge World Resin yet. I don't think. So I need to make sure I'm happy with it before I spend a lot of money on something like one of the Deathcore tanks. Right, so in an hour and a half, I've built one set of tracks. Go, Fox. Go, Fox. Because I'm a monster. I'm just a track building monster. So I think that's a good time for us to take a pause and give away some sticky sticks, I think. So I'm going to put that to one side over there. I'm going to have a swig of coffee. Nom, 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 oh. Yeah. But yes, I have a massive stash of all kinds of kits I need to build at the moment, so... <clears throat> Holding off on any getting any new Warhammer kits just for the moment. Right. Let's see what the chat's doing. Uh, Fox into Bane Blade. Uh, no, we're talking about 1980s Teleads. Ghost Lyle says it is the Bane Blade. Got an Amazon delivery of Christmas presents earlier. Forgot I put a hot glue gun in my basket a few days ago. It felt like a present for me, says Paul. He's <laughs> sweet. We are not talking about proper football. It's Liverpool, says David Butcher, that model. Oh, the burn. Where did you get... What did you get me? There's a line, you know. What did you get me? Baneblade, let it rip. Excessive farting, says James. Uh, still talking about football. <sighs> Team Inept. I was thinking about starting my Forge World Primark. I wimped out. Yes, uh, Paul at Team Inept ordered, like, I don't know... Something this big from Forge World that cost like 35p. <laughs> it's lies. Nothing costs 35p. Like some little thing from Forge World that cost me a few quid. And by mistake, they sent him... Uh, 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 I said Ragnar the Red, but that's Skyrim. Magnus the Red. That's it. They sent him the resin figure of Magnus. Magnus? I've got the right one. So it's like, imagine, it's like me saying, hello, I'd like to order a sanding stick, please. And somebody saying, certainly, here's Dora the Rail, here, Dora the Rail Gun in 135th scale by mistake. Wow, thanks. So yeah, they sent him like an entire figure and he got back to me. They said, no, I'll just keep it. Like, oh, dude. I mean, that's resin, but free. <gasps> so I, I, I'm hoping, because I ordered my little 10, my little 10 uh, Death Cora Krieg dudes. I thought, wouldn't it be great if they accidentally sent me just a really expensive Forge World kit by mistake? I ordered 10 Forge World guys, 10 Death Cora Krieg guys, and you sent me a Titan. Oops, never mind. <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh... <laughs> hello, hello, it's a skill model vamp. Welcome, dude. Uh, just turn up just for the stickers. I see just in time for the stickers. Well, we could always talk about American football, says Nim. No, that also a sport. We don't do sport. Oh no, Jammy Git says says Day uh, Dad about Paul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they sent me this pound stick. I'm like, oh, you bugger. Although it does mean that somewhere somebody ordered a Magnus the Red and got some little farty thing for like five pound worth of stuff. Right, um, I need to do some sticker giveaways. So let me clear a space. And let me clear some mess away. Hang on. A bit of mess going on there. Ugh. Can't believe it took me an hour and a half to build one track. It's an idiot. This is kind of why I can't do anything complicated and involved when I'm doing live streams with you guys, because I just don't get anything done. I can either sit and paint and say nothing, or just, you know, do glibby stuff. Uh, I got everything that I'd ordered too. They just accidentally had put £80 worth of resin in the same box. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. I bet it was. <laughs> right, stick of time. Today we have, same as last week, we've got a selection. We have Anne Gross Model... I'll do it for you guys. Anne Gross Model Sticker. Jaunty Angle Time. Anne Model Making Guru Sticker. Uh, and Anne 
Skilly model sticker. We'll count this as one. Because only little, they're only little, tiny little fellas. Sergeant Bones is in. Look at that. I get the stickers out and Sergeant Bones turns up. But even though he's right there, where is he? Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, yeah, so I'd, I'd love to accidentally get a load of stuff sent to me. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> Already got all of them, says Ghost Lyle. Dad, Sergeant, been looking for you. Oh, fine. No teaming up stickers, bastard, says Paul. I haven't got any. You don't want to send me any. If you don't want to send me any, then I can't, I can't give them away, can I? Hey, hey, hey. Right. Time to do some giveaway. So what we need to do, first of all, is the... Get my pen out. Why no scale model vamp stickers? Nobody sent me any. <laughs> uh, right, so what I'll do is, I'll just write either... Os well, I was going to say, I'll, I'll put Cy Reynolds on there, but he's not in chat. So I'll just write Osric 9000 on the back of all of these, shall I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so let's come up with some word. Some words. Clamps. Uh, crinkle. I don't know why I do this bit. And uh, fudge, but don't know what that means. Right, so we have some stickers. I don't know why I write stuff on the back, it's just fun. I've done flump. I think I've done flump before, Sergeant Bones. I'll probably have to do it again because I've run out of squishy words at some point. Right, so we need to do some questions. Let me see if I've got any questions in the magical email. Now, before we go anywhere, uh, what I'm going to do is, if you've not seen one of these before, and I know everybody in chat has seen this before, but never mind. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, I will give you a question. I will ask a question in chat. No, I'll ask a question on the telly. Uh, and whoever answers it first in chat will win a sticker of their choice. Uh, however, before we get going anywhere, what you need to do is refresh your browser window and drag the slidey thing across to the right because there'll be a lag between the video and the audio by now. So do that now. I'm going to quickly have a look at my email and see if we've got any questions. So refresh your screen and uh, drag the slider. Let me go and check my emails. Do 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 do. Paul, I'm not asking that question, <laughs> spoon. Paul sent me a question. Hi, Fox. When are you going to paint the widge? Love and hugs, team inept. Like and subscribe. Idiot. Right, let's <laughs> just delete that one. Right. Uh... Oh, we have a question from Scott Sutherland, but is Scott actually in chat? Are you in chat, Scott? That was sent at 3.07. I haven't seen you in chat. How have I not seen you in chat? Say hello in chat. Uh, he's in the pub, Muse. Uh, ah, I got him again, says Paul. Yeah. But load of stickers, says Osric 9000. I've not even asked the question yet. Okay, right, here we go. Here's a question from Scott Sutherland in Orkney. Good old Scott, who sent me, of course, Guthorm. Yay! So we'll put Guthorm there, because you can overwatch. I like the fact he kind of looks up a little bit. It's quite, quite adorable. So... Are we all ready for the question answerings? Okay, here's the question. Ready? Uh, in Norse mythology, Odin had two ravens. What were they called? Go. In Norse mythology, Odin had two ravens. I'm not too fussed about the spelling, but two ravens. Of, he, he says Odin, O-D-E-N, but I assume he means Odin, was Othan. So really want to, I'm going to refresh my chat so I can make sure I'm up to date. Philip and Bill, left and right. I know this, but I won't answer, says Paul. Dumb and dumber, Smokey and the Bandit. I like that, <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> Good thinking. Uh, Scale Model Vamp says, Hugin and Munin. There you go, ban, straight in. Hugin, I assume that's the pronunciation, not Huggin and Munin. Hugin and Munin. Uh, is the correct the name of his two ravens? So well done, Vamp. Which sticker would you like? You can have the gross models, the model making gurus, or the scaly models. Which would you prefer? Let me know which one you want. Everybody's waiting now for you. We'll just sit here and do nothing until you answer. I don't know. Just because you live a long way away. 
Uh, got yours. Tis weak, so grossy sticky. There we go. Right. Uh, I've not sent off the stickers from last week yet because I ran out of envelopes. Okay. So remember, if you win anything tonight, today, just send me. Even if you've got a, even if you've got an email sent to me before for something else and I'm, you're still waiting for it, send me another email. Say, hey, I won a. Give me an address and tell me which one you won. Just tell me you won the gross one. And I'll get it sent off. I need the email in my inbox to remind me. If I've got six emails from you, I know to send you six stickers. So if you do win something tonight, send me a mail saying, hey, I won this. Please send me this. There you go. Right, so that's that one done. The gross model is that that's vamp. Well done. Uh, I like turtles, says Sergeant Bones. Cool. Turtles are cool. Uh, well done, Scott. Uh, what's else Scott? No, well, well done, Vamp. Even thank you for the question, Scott. Uh, right, what's next? Next, we have a question from Dave. I will immediately let you know once we are done investigating the issue. Have a nice day. Cheers, Max. Oh, that's YouTube. Sorry, <laughs> this is the wrong email completely. Uh, uh, do, do, do. Name and address withheld as Pip says no more bloody stickers. <sighs> Okay, right, here we go. It's a warhammer one. Get your Warhammer parts of your brains ready. Uh... Hey, oh, you're oh, you spelling spot on as well, Dave. I'm impressed. Right, uh, here we go. Space Marines are divided into six different types of squad. There are tactical squads, assault squads, terminator squads, veteran squads, scout squads, and what other kind of squad? Go. So you've got tactical, assault, Terminator, Veteran, Scout, and what's the last squad? Mm -hmm. Why does everybody want so many stickers, says Chris? Because stickers are awesome. I've actually forgotten the, the name already. There we, there we go. Blazing Squad. Oh, Nerdy Band Member. Heavy. Dead Squads. Uh, Tyrone Key says Devastator, which is the right answer. So well done, Tyrone. You've got the Devastator squads. They're just big, scary dudes. So you have a choice now. You can have uh, the model making guru sticky, or you can have a couple of little teeny tiny uh, scaly models sticky. I like the fact he's cut it off and left a bit on the top of the last sticker above it <laughs> by accident. So would you like the scaly model stickers? You get two, or would you like the model making guru sticker? We will sit here and wait and do nothing. Sit quietly until you tell us. That's not fun to watch if I just go quiet, is it? Oh, which one would you like? Scaly models, he says. Well done. Then you shall have the scaly models. Tyrone Key. Actually, writing small things in a big fat pen is not ideal. So, well done. Send me an email. Fox at modelmakingguru.com. The address is there. No, not that, but the address is here. Fox at modelmakingguru.com. Just tell me you won two scaly model stickers, and I'll get them. So, that obviously, include your name and address, obviously. Uh, if you have sent me a mail before about something and you've given me a name and address, don't forget, of course, I don't keep your name and address. I delete the email as soon as I send you whatever I send you. So I don't keep your personal details. Right. This is a family channel, says Scale Model Muse. Nonsense. No, this isn't eModels. This is not a family channel. I don't swear much, but if you do swears in the chat, I can't stop you doing that. And it's often quite funny. Squishy, squishy, tipsy, bishy, squishy, says Scale Model Vamp. Vampy stop. Butt fudge lol. Nobody wants guru stickers. Uh, no one answered the question, says Ghost Lyle. I don't know. Uh, have we actually got another question? We don't have another question. Uh, Dave doesn't want the sticker because he'll get told off. Uh, unless I have some stickers. Do I have any more stickers? Let me see if I've got any old questions that I can ask. Done that one. Done that one. Uh, okay, I don't think we've got any questions left over that haven't been done yet. So we'll do the good old standby. We shall write, we shall do the old number on the back of the hand. Foxy, you have no idea how funny that is. Fudge but it's, Hey, I just write these things down. I can't help if it just happens to be something quite rude and disgusting. Wait, something just come in. Breaking news. Da, 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 da. Question for the next week. Okay, what I'm going to do, Nim, is I'm going to use that question right now because I can't, I'm far too lazy to make up my own question. 
<laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, so uh, we have a question from Nim, which I'm supposed to ask next week. I'm doing it now for this beautiful, beautiful handcrafted one of a kind. It's not one of a kind model making guru sticker. Are we ready? Just uh, make sure you're all up in chat. Uh, okay, right. So we ready. Here we go. In the lay of Thrym, don't, ooh, don't know. In the lay of Thrym, what did Thor have to dress as to get his hammer back? Go. In the lay of Thrym, I have no idea what that is. What did Thor have to dress as to get his hammer back? Paul DiSamasso, hello Fox, all you other crazy modelers, welcome dude. Naughty soldier boy, that's it, yeah. We're limited to how high Fox can count on these two. Uh, what do you, actually I've forgotten already. Uh, oh, there we go. Pineapple fudge butts, a maid, a woman, Mrs. Doubtfire, princess, a woman, the peanut guy, a lady, a lady boy, female, a pedo, no. Maybe nobody will get this. It might end up being the number on the hand time. Uh, oh, scale model mu. Ooh, hang on. Uh, is that the first one? Uh, Paul just deleted a lot of stuff, but I don't know what it was. Uh, he dressed as a bride. It says scale model muse. That is correct. He dressed as a bride, apparently. Remember, I don't know this is true or not. I just assume it is. So, Muse, thank you very much. Uh, well done, congratulations. Uh, what you need to do, you know what to do. You need to send me an email with your name and address and tell me what. Uh, my brain just suddenly stopped then. Tell you what, tell me what you want. And I'll get that sent out to you, so well done. Well done to all three of you. Right, <sighs> so far we built one track yes so yeah we'll get those stickers I've not sent out last week's stickers yet uh, so I'm gonna send them out probably after Christmas now because it's a bit late to send stuff out It'll take months to get there so we'll, we'll do that after Christmas get all those sent out to you uh, have a quick look at the chat don't forget of course as always we've still got the uh, Avid Madars stream boss battle going on um, so get your super chats the dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window or your tip jars Tips with the tip jar, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru uh, through. And the bigger your tip or the bigger your super chat, the more health comes off. And if you get him to zero, you can win two to three hundred quid worth of Games Workshop and Forge World goodness. So of your choice. It's an important bit. So get those coming through. Uh, where are we? What's chat doing? Uh, just before we crack on with the build again, a quick little advertising break. Uh, if you need to pick anything up, I have to do this. I have to do this. I'm sorry, guys. If you need to pick anything up uh, on Amazon at any time in the next day or two, your modelling supplies, don't forget, da -da 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 -da, you can go to the amazon.co.uk forward slash shop forward slash model making guru. It's my little place on Amazon. Uh, and if you need to pick anything up and it's in the stuff that I've got in the store, grab it from that link. It just helps me out a little bit, helps keep this channel going because it gives me a little bit of income based on if you order through there so if you're going to go and pick something up have a look on there first just to see if it's available if it's listed on my store if it is just use that link and that helps me out massively a little bit of income comes my way it doesn't you don't have to pay more until like just a little bit of, almost like a commission i get if it goes through my little profile link so if you need to pick something up check that page out first give it a go and if it's there snag it from there yeah, advertising break over do, 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 do. there you go i have to do that i know i know some people don't like it but you have to remember, you have to remember, this is a business. I'm running a business here. I need to have an income. I need to pay the bills. So any way I can, I will <sighs> make some money, I guess. I'm British. I don't like doing that, but I have to do it. Because I have to be able to pay the bills and eat. So there you go. Right, what are we doing? We are doing the other side of the tra tank tracks now. Uh, video. Uh, I checked out the Iwata TRN1 and apparently they can't ship it to Canada. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's only UK listings I can link to. I have inquired, but at the moment, I don't see any other way to... Uh, I don't see any way for me to link to non-UK listings, which is a bit of a pain, but it's better than nothing. So if you're in the UK, 
And so it's no, if you're buying something through Amazon, it's no different if you buy it through that link than if you buy it through any other link from your point of view. You're not paying more, it doesn't cost you more. It's just when you place the order, it has my name on it. It, has, it says this is referred by, you know, Fox, model making guru. And I get a little bit of a tip of the hat for that. So from your point of view, it's no different to what it is normal. It's just a case of, if you're gonna go and pick something up, have a look on there first. Just see if I've got it listed. And oh, sorry, knocking the microphone. And if it's not listed, you can always pop me a note and say, hey, can you add it to your little store? And I'll go for what are you doing? I'm getting attacked from all angles here. Oh. Uh, yeah, if you want me to, you can, I can add it to the store if you need it. Uh, what's that? That's that. But um, yeah, no, I've got to, I've got to think of ways to supplement my income. Because this is, a, you know, this is a business. I, I'm, I don't do all this for the good of my health. I do all this to make a living. All these streams and the builds I do in the videos, it's 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 my income, it's my my chosen profession. Uh, and while I'm not able to get up get a lot of builds done that I can sell, any other way of making an income is what I need to do, because I need to pay the bills. I need to pay the bills and buy food and you know, not die of starvation. Like I said, I'm British and I don't like asking for money, but I've got to, I've got to do it. So I try and do it in such a way that it's as inobtrusive as possible. I'm not one of these people that will spend the first 20 minutes of a video going on about buying my t-shirts and buy this and buy that and da 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 da. I'd rather put it at the end and just say, hey, if you want to help out, there you go. <clears throat> Right, that's all the bits for the tracks. The right ones this time. Uh, let's have a look. Where am I? Is this what timeout looks like, says Sergeant Bones. No objection from me at all. We have bills to pay, says Zadster. Uh, ship it to a city across the border and pop across, says Team Inept. I must leave my planet needs me, says Ghost Lyle. See you later, dude. Are those tracks, Fox? No wheels, says Sergeant Bones. Yeah, look, tracks. Where's Kenneth when you need him? What is that model, Fox? I was late today, says Nicholas C. We are building the... It's obviously from our Warhammer army. It is the uh, Imperial Guard Chimera, which is a personnel transport. It's the same basic structure as uh, the... Not the Lehman Russ, but the Hydra anti-aircraft platform. But then with the extra bits, the different bits on top. It's kind of standard template. So, yep, that was the Imperial Guard Chimera that Dad, Dave, Kenneth and Scott got me. Very, very kindly. Along with the Walker. The little um, Sentinel Scout that I made last week on the Extra Long Live Show. My little sneaky, sneaky, sneaky Scout that's being all stealthy and crouched down. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, looks like a rhinoplasty thingamajig. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a rhino, but kind of longer and with the turret and stuff. It's a chimera dingaling, says Sergeant Bones. Spillage on the agrax. No, says Earl D. Oh my god. Oh my god. Have you spilled your agrax? Uh, Dad not sent you one of these yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, what are we doing? I'm doing the uh, cutting. Cutting nubs. If I can give you one piece of life advice... It is. If you're the kind of person that like you know licks your brush to get a point, don't do it when there's Agrax Earthshade on it. Because I've got to tell you, Agrax Earthshade, worst flavour of any kind in the world. It really does taste like absolute ass. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Better spilled Agrax as drunken null oil. Dad, you need to set up a store to sell these things, says Nim. Yeah, don't don't lick your brush if it's got Agrax on it. <coughs> Equally, the worst time to accidentally drink your brush water is when you've been doing a lot of Agrax earth shading. Because that doesn't end well either. Yeah. Right, do I need to actually sand these nub? Do they still... Yeah, they're still short. Okay. You can see that there's quite a few little sandy marks there and squidgy mark. I'm going to clean that up later on. It'll get a bit of a quick sand over just to clean it up. Once the tracks are all glued in place permanently. 
Thanks, are you adding extra detail? Uh, no, I'm just going to build this as the kit. Because I'm building it for my army, but it's going to be quite a big army. So at this point, I'm not going into too much. I mean, I said that, but if you look at my Torox, I added a load of stuff to the Torox that wasn't part of the kit. So, I, Oh, did I? Yeah, I put some, extra, put some rifles on there. And I put a custom-made thing on the front, like a rolled up bed roll and there's a thing on the back there and yeah so I did add some bits to my Torox so yeah that decal does my head look at that decal it's not even straight oh does my head in put some leather straps on it so yeah I did add some bits to my to my Torox so I, I probably will I'll probably get carried away I mean what I'll do, what I'm doing at the minute is I'll just get this built same as my Lehman Russ and my Hydra I get them built and not primed or anything and then when it comes to the time to paint them I might then decide you know what let's just stick a load of stuff on it but I need to get some stuff built Imperial Guard stuff because I've got I've made the joke I've, I'm starting to do my own army I've never played a game yet but I keep making the mistake of everything I build I don't have the codex for so I built my Imperial Knight I haven't got the Imperial Knight's codex I built some Space Marines I haven't got the Space Marines codex I thought, well, I better start building something I can actually play so I can go and get a game in. Uh, and I do have the Astra Militarum Codex, which is why I've started on my Scions and my Torox. And I have the uh, Armour of the Imperium Codex from Forge World for the Death Core of Krieg, so I need to get them built. And I was going to do that on a live stream, build those guys, but it's resin, so I can't really do that. Because it would be three hours of me with a mask on, which wouldn't be very entertaining. Jamie, you missed stickers for Foxy Told a Joke and Paul ran around in his house naked. Uh, hi everyone, what have I missed? Oh, hi Jamie. Uh, you missed all the things. Diddly 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 sending 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 If you're wondering why I'm doing the circular motions by the way, and yes I said that deliberately, if you wonder why I'm doing the circular motions, it's because it just helps hide any sanding marks from the file. It just like I was saying, if you missed it earlier on, when you're sanding, if you're sanding one direction all the time, you get sanding marks like that. If I then go over it again, like that, and then like that, and then that, or, or in fact just go in circles, all you do is, you don't get specific sanding marks, you just get a rough surface, which is perfect for hiding evidence of sanding. It's pretty much why, uh, for any model that you're painting, you get all these people with like sanding kits and they've got like 80 grit, 100 grit, 120 grit, 240 grit, 375 grit, 1200 grit, 1800 grit, 6000 grit. It's like, you know what? You don't need all that. You need a file, 120 grit, and then something like this, which is God knows what. Paul, you need to put your grip, your grit on your sanding sticks. It's hard to recommend which ones to use when I don't know what grit they are. I only know that's 120 because I've read it on the website. Uh, yeah, so you don't need tons and tons of sanding sticks. If you, you know, if you're painting your model, you just need to get it smooth. That's it. So there's there's almost no point buying like packs of 75 different grades of sanding. It's like for what we need, you don't. Literally a reasonably mild file. 120 grit and a whatever that is probably about 1200 grit I guess if you're doing something that's not going to be painted because if you're painting your model all you want is a smooth surface you're not bothered about the finish as long as it's smooth if you're doing like a gumpla that you're not going to paint that's when you want to get into using multiple multiple grits because then you want to be able to sand it to a pol and polish it and make it look like just untouched plastic if you're painting it and priming it, nobody cares. Just just get it flat, smooth. That's all you need. That's all you need. I did not run around naked, said Paul Di Tommaso. 
Are you building the Camara stock or modified, says JS Hideout? No, just stock from the box. I've never even played a game yet, so I'm just going to go in with the box standard vehicles and stuff. I'll probably end up building more in time anyway. For now, I'm just going to... When I start out, I'll just have like one of each thing, maybe. I'll have three Imperial Knights. But... Now, I know for these bits, I don't have to sand these, because you're not going to see them. I just need to smooth them out. Yeah, so probably, when I start off, I'll just have one of each thing. So over time, what I might do is then add a couple more, and then I might start varying things. On my Lehman Rus, I've actually magnetized, they're not finished building it properly. I've magnetized the turret so I can swap out the main weapon. So it's the, the turret will be the same, but I can open it up and just pop in a different cannon. So that's kind of a bit flexible. Uh, can't leave it standard, got to make it yours, says Nicholas C. Well, the paint job will be kind of mine because I'm painting it. My I don't know if you were here at the start, but my entire army, Nicholas, is going to be uh, based upon the Mobile Suit Gundam Principality of Xeon. Because I made up a whole load of fluff in my in my defence as to why the Principality of Xeon is suddenly in the Warhammer 40k universe using technology of the Imperium of Man. There is a big long fluff explanation as to why. Uh, but that's why, for example, uh, my Torox that I showed you a minute ago, that's why, for example, my Torox has a big Xeon symbol on the back and has Xeon symbols on it there and there. See, ah, there's, there's a big fluff reason for this. Uh, it's also why it's got those little Gundam decals all over it. Uh, if you see, my Imperial Knight has the same thing, it has Principality of Zeon. My Imperial Knights will be painted in three different ways. The first one I've done is painted like a Zaku, so it's battered and rusty and beaten. Uh, the second one, when I get round to it, will be painted like a goof. So it'll be in blue and it'll have Rambaral symbol on it. I've got little Rambaral crest, uh, decals of Rambaral's. Uh, family crest or whatever it is so that's that's going to be a goof and then the third one will be painted up like Char's Zaku so it'll all be in red and it'll be like the the good the, the Zaku is knackered and rusty and dirty the goof will be a bit weathered but not much and the uh, the Zaku Char's Zaku will be nice and clean be a clean build and to complement Char's Zaku which will be an Imperial Knight. I'm also painting my Tempestus Scions in a red colour scheme that is basically... Oh, I can show you that, actually. I can show... I've done, a, I've done a quick one, but it's not a finished one. I did a test paint, paint of one of my uh, Scions. Let me find him. Hang on. Now, it's not the final paint job because I messed up the white and I've, I've got a different scheme to do when I get round to painting the rest. But I forgot to show you this. Hang on. Let me get my zoomage going on. You put them in a little grippy handle so you can see. But I did I did one guy as a test test paint. So if I can get the focus right. Yeah, it's not gonna look great because the camera's crap. If I can, if I can maybe zoom out but bring it closer. If I zoom out but go there. Hang on, let me bring it up to the focus. There we go, that's a bit better. So you can see my Tempesta Scions will be a red colour scheme. Now they've got the red of the armour, which is, is a little bit lighter than the red of the actual outfit underneath the armour. Then the gloves and the boots are white, as is the any belts or the bottle on the side. Now the white on this figure is gash, it's absolute rubbish, uh, because I was missing a colour, so I'm not, they're not going to look quite as bad as that. <laughs> I've got, um, I was missing all through in grey, so I've got that now. Uh, the weapons will be like red casings all the trim is gold and then the backpack is just a regular standard backpack to mix the one match the one on the back of the um temp on the torox but yeah like i said the feet the feet and gloves that paint job's terrible this this guy will get stripped down and repainted because i was just testing out all the colors but that's the, it's a two-tone red color scheme and then white boots and gloves to match the outfit worn by charas Nable in mobile suit gundam universe so there you go that's the colors they're going to be i'll just put him over to one side now, it actually took me about six hours to paint that guy, but I was kind of practicing all the colours, so hopefully, when it comes to doing the actual proper painting all of them, they won't all be that colour. I forgot I could show you that. 
and I might tweak the I might tweak the choice of paints and colours a little bit, just a little bit, because that was my that was my example test pig. Uh, Fox, you should make a web page explaining the fluff of your army, and people from the Boom Hut should be able to write stories about them and post them to the web page. Yeah, I might I might add a page to my website. I do have a website, modelmakingguru.com. I just haven't got a page on there. I might do actually. It's not a bad idea. Explaining the fluff. That'd be quite good actually. Uh, yeah, that's not a bad idea actually. I could do that. I used to have a blog on my website, but I, I, it was a pain in the ass to maintain it, so I just got rid of that. Uh, I, mean, I always forget to update my website anyway, so. I like the Chimera, but that turret is too damn small. Well, it's not a tank though, is it? It's, it's an armoured personnel carrier with a turret on the top, really. So it's only a bit like having a striker with a. You imagine a real life striker armour personnel carrier. And it's got like a 50 cal on the top. It's only a bit like that. Not really a tank. It's like having a striker with a turret rather than just a 50 cal. I suppose. I suppose. So yes, anyway, it's a Principality of Zeon themed army. So it will be it will be unique. I'll be playing it as bog. I won't be making up, you know, its own rules and stuff. But um, it will look different on the tabletop. Right, don't worry about these too much, just get them flat. Uh, sorry, missed the fluff, says Nicholas C. Okay, abridged version of the fluff. I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I explained this. Abridged version of the fluff. Uh, Principality of Z. If you don't know, in the Mobile Suit Gundam universe, which is the Japanese anime uh, series, Mo uh, Principality of Zeon is a faction in that. It's, it's set in a uh, futuristic... Um, fictional reality where man has traveled in space and made lots of colonies and the colonies are, are vying for independence from earth anyway uh, what happens basically in the fluff is that the fluff that i made up in my brain is that one day in the imperium of man there's a, a rift in the warp and uh, what happens basically is that a chunk of the Warhammer universe disappears into the rift in the warp and a chunk of the Mobile Suit Gundam universe replaces it. And at the other end, we, we assume, of course, at the other end in the Mobile Suit Gundam universe, suddenly a big chunk of the Imperium of Man's, you know, big chunk of the uh, Warhammer universe pops into existence and replaces the Principality of Zion, a big chunk of it. So... You've got the Imperium of Man, and suddenly in space there's this big chunk of universe, big chunk of galaxy, that's um, from the Mobile Suit Gundam universe. And it's actually an area of space that was inhabited solely by the Principality of Zeon. Uh, so, and nobody really knows what happens, because you know, all the stars are kind of in the same place. So straight away, nobody really realises what's going on. Because Zeon have got interstellar travel, but not like that much. They don't really go anywhere. Um, but anyway, the Imperium discovers this. They're, they're found, they're discovered. And the Imperium sends some uh, Inquisitors to see what all this is about. Which one am I doing this now? This goes this way. So they send some Inquisitors to check it out. And they find this, uh, this civilization there with, you know, spacefaring and mobile suits and all this kind of stuff. And technology which is... In, in many ways, way in advance of the Imperium of Man. You know, they've got beam sabers and beam rifles and all kinds of stuff that is actually well in advance of the Imperium of Man with their dogma. So, the Imperium makes contact uh, with the Zeons. That's not right, that's in the wrong place. Uh, the Imperium makes contact uh, and by makes contact, what we of course mean is that that's, is that in the right place? I've had to glue this in without even checking it's in the right place first, you spoon. Uh, by makes contact, I mean they send a lot of space marines and armed forces down to see what's going on. Uh, and they make the Xeons an ultimatum. Uh, they basically say, okay, right, you've got two choices. You can uh, allow, us, uh, allow us, allow yourselves to be subjugated into the Imperium of Man. 
Um, pledge loyalty to the Emperor, the God Emperor of Mankind, and fight for the Imperium. Or, given the fact that you've got a limited population of, you know, maybe millions, and there's billions of us, we can just wipe you from existence. Because you wouldn't stand a chance. Even with your fancy mobile suits and Zaku's and that and things, you wouldn't stand a chance. And the Zeons think about this for, you know, a few seconds. And they realise that's not a bad deal, really. We haven't really got a lot of choice here. So they agree. Uh, and the Imperium says, brilliant, fantastic. Uh, however, we're gonna have to, you're going to have to take, confiscate all your technology because it's heretical uh, and you can't have it. So they take away all their beam technology and mobile suit technology, everything else, and instead they replace it with Imperial technology. So instead of the Zaku's and other things, they now have things like Imperial Knights uh, and you know standard bolter weapons and stuff. They are given or somehow, I don't know how it ends up, they end up having a, a Space Marine chapter um, of their own. Uh, they get a detachment of uh, Admech. So they've got some Skitari and stuff who who go and help them get up to speed. And then as the Skitari and Admech sometimes do, they decide to stay in that area. So they change their colour. So they've got some Skitari and they're all green rather than red. And they basically just become part of the Imperium using their weapons. But they're allowed to, although they're, they lose all the technology, they're allowed to keep all their individualities. They're allowed to, you know, still be the Principality of Xeon and they have all the markings and logos and stuff. So there you go, that's, that's the fluff. But there's a little question mark at the end because I liked a little twist at the end that says, you know, the, uh, the, com the Inquisition confiscated all their technology and left them with nothing uh, other than Imperial technology. However, it's not to be assumed that all their technology was destroyed question mark question mark because the technology was heretical but when the uh, when the admech got all the tech did they destroy it all because it's heretical or perhaps you know did Belisarius call to see some of this Xeon technology and think you know actually this isn't something we really should be throwing away we keep hold of that Maybe some rogue element in the Admech kept some of it back. Who can say? Who can say? I just I was just sitting there one night and I was trying to figure out. I'd already decided to do the Xeon colour scheme. I thought, if I came up with some fluff, what would the fluff be? <laughs> and that was it. So there you go. Vincent says, it would be a shock to see Battlefleet Gothica warping in, shouting surrender or be deemed a heretic. Yeah, you kind of, you kind of may have be a bit pants poopage there. But that was my thinking, you see, is that the, confronted with the overwhelming numbers, sheer overwhelming force and numbers of the Imperium, no matter how many, you know, how much of the Zeonic population came over, they probably really wouldn't have a choice. They wouldn't, they'd be like, no, we want to be independent and say, well, we, you can be independent and dead. Or you can become part of the Imperium of Man. You'd be like, okay, fine. But then it explains, of course, why they haven't got any technology. They haven't got beam technology. They're using Zaku's and that and things. Because they've got no choice. They've got no choice at all. Mm -hmm. And I've got... Uh, and it's, it's quite a nice sort of, you know, transfer across. Because you've got... You can replace the Zaku's. But I'm replacing Zaku's with Imperial Knights. Uh, I've got three armages, which are painted up as uh, prototype Zaku. So, um, what were they called? Mobile workers, which were like small prototypes of Zaku's. So they're all bright orange with Zeonic symbols all over them. And it just kind of it's just kind of fun with it, really. It's all just silly fun times, and it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. It's just silly fun. They'll be played as standard factions on the table if I ever get round to doing that. But I'll just have it. I'll just have fluff there if I ever want to spew it out to people because somebody'll ask. Some neckbeard will be like, uh, and I'll be like, here's the here's the fluff. Sit down, get yourself a coffee. Here's the fluff. Right, so that's that track done. Uh, what's chat doing? 
Welcome back, says Dad, to somebody who came back, but I don't know who it was. Uh, to be honest, I think there's no interstellar travel at all in the Gundam universe. Furthest out in the law is Jupiter and its moons, I think. Uh, all about them colonies, you know. It could be. I think that's actually right. So it might be that, yeah, <laughs> the Xeonics can't travel between stars. So they're kind of stuck. They wouldn't know necessarily they've moved because the stars would be in the same place until the Imperium of Man turned up. <laughs> the Imperium said, great magic super. Here's what you would have won. <laughs> Need an Imperium speedboat. Yeah. I want the Gundam Warhammer crossover as a telly series. It would be good, wouldn't it? Will be uh, that's what Vincent about the Battlefleet Gothica. Right, well that's all I've done so far. It's book a roll, isn't it? I built two tracks. Well, you can see how big it's going to be. It's going to be approximately that big. <laughs> I do like the tanks. They're kind of silly. So I've got some cleanup to do around the tracks because there's a few still little sandy marks and gluey marks where I've stuck them all in. TB Dep says, right, I'm going to make dinner. Don't say anything funny. Well, I'm going to go in shortly anyway because I'm absolutely dying for a wee and it's getting towards my tea time. So we're going to be going to stop a little short this week. And I'm not really going to start anything else now because there's nothing else I can build quickly. Oh, then again, actually, tell you what I can do. Tell you what I can do. Tell you what I can do. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we can, we can assemble if we wish to, the floorage. Might as well get that done. Dee -dee -dee. So I thought it was just a fun thought exercise to make up some fluff. But I'm, uh, I, I thought long and hard about the colour to make the Scions. Because unfortunately they do look fantastic in their default colour scheme. Uh, and the red colour scheme, I, I wasn't fully sold on it, but I've got to experiment a little bit. But yeah, the white, I completely screwed up the white on that guy. So that's why he's not going to be that. That He's going to be stripped and repainted. Once I've got, I tried basically painting white without all through and grey in the mix and it didn't work out. Christopher Combs says, hello everyone. Hello Christopher Combs. Welcome, welcome. Get these nubs off. See if we can quickly get the floor done before we all bugger off and go home. Uh, is that even the right? Yeah, it's the right piece. What's everybody having for dinner this evening then, assuming that you've not had your dinner yet? If you have had your dinner, what have you had? But if you haven't had your evening dinner yet, dinner, tea or whatever you want to call it, what are you planning? Like I said before, for me it's hot dogs because we've got loads of hot dogs left over from yesterday. So I'm going to have hot dogs, yes. And if I'm still hungry after hot dogs, we've only got a few left. Can I survive on three hot dogs? If I can't, I've got two saurine loaves. Got two loaves of saurine to eat, yes. That would be nice. And I also bought myself an enormous tiger loaf. Tiger bread loaf. Tiger loaf bread thing. Which is just on its own with butter is really nice. And it's also pre-sliced, which is brilliant. Tiger loaf pre-sliced. The best thing in the world. That's huge. One thing about Tesco, they're not cheap, but they do do fantastic tiger loaves. Eating now. So good, says Rat Pack. It's lunchtime and I've just had pizza. I am having food, says Tyrone. Uh, Dad says, it is going to Somerset as well. Right, my babber. Are you sending things down to Somerset now, are you? That seems quite kind, that does. Oh, you like down there? Oh, you've never been down that far. Oh, you bet it's still summer down there. Summer all year round in that part of the world. They never have rain nor cold weather nor nothing. It's probably a terrible accent. I'll stop now. I like to think I do accents really well, but in reality, I totally don't. I constantly think I have a really good Scottish accent, but everybody who's Scottish tells me it's terrible. I'm like, oh. <sighs> I need a portable workstation that Mrs. keeps running me off to use the area for her crafting. <clears throat> Wait, why is her crafting... <laughs> How, why, why do you need to, why can't she get a different work craft area because you're crafting as well why can't she get a portable work area one of you can get a portable work area then there's happiness you see unless her crafting actually makes money in which case yeah pack up your stuff and let her get on with it <laughs> yeah 
the one that makes money gets preferential treatment. It's always the way. Do 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 do. Not even have to use my seam line tool yet, which is quite cool. Uh, I'm gonna have turkey and ham, says James Lorimore. I think I've used more Celestra grain or Thurin grain than anything else over the last few weeks. Well, you're doing your Age of Sigmar nonsense. I basically got Celestra grey and then tried going over with White Scar and I forgot about all Thurin grain. It was just an absolute abortion. It didn't look good at all. So that'll be a lesson, folks. You really do need all Thurin grey. <laughs> yeah. So that, that little fella I showed you, he'll get, he'll get stripped down and repainted once I've figured it out. It was just a test bunny, test pig. I wanted to see if the colour scheme worked. I knew I'd have to strip him down. Dad says, my babber. Jamie Bowen says, Fox, that is exactly what we sound like. Is it? Is that a good accent? Am I doing all right with that? Am I? That's not bad then, is it? That's all right, my babber. I reckon I'd go down there and they wouldn't know I was from anywhere else. I'd be like, my name's Fox and I'm not from up north or nothing like that. I, I've lived here all my life. And they'd say, have some cider, and I'd be like, oh no, I don't like cider, and then they'd kick me out, because they know I was a fake. The funniest thing is, my 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 version of that kind of accent is based entirely 100% on my childhood memories of Pam Ayres. That's entirely what I base it on. Pam Ayres and her middle-class kaftan era poetry. Uh, not bad fox to be fair says dad all right my babber for a made a pillow and a blanket the other day says james cool then it's then her her hobby is obviously her crafting is a lot more useful than yours so yeah just shut up and put it away <laughs> give her what she needs yeah, if, if one hobby is just for fun and one is actually either functional, practical or profitable, yeah, the just for fun one is the second is the second option. Does what the first one wants. Uh, Dave says his Nagash army is 4,000 points. I don't even know how many points my army is right now. It's, it's still in bits and it's not organised at all. I've got a bit of this and a bit of that. There's no real structure to mine. I'm just building up stuff. I'll just accrue this massive army that I know myself. I'll probably end up playing it once, realise I don't actually like playing Warhammer probably, and then just sell it all. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I might really enjoy it, but I've never played Warhammer, so I don't know. So This is part of my journey as... It makes it exciting because I've got no idea whether I'll enjoy it or not. Uh, Vincent at Mr. Lowe says looking for inspiration for 400 points of allies in and round to, to out to 2,500. I've been going at it in a way that they can be made to 1,000 and 1,500 points as well. I don't know. Is that uh, Warhammer or is that Age of Sigma? Fox uh, just sent you an email with a picture. Check it out. Hang on a minute. I shall have a look. Let's have a look and see. Oh, what is that? Dude, that is... Is that... Have you made that head yourself? Yeah, the head is a little large. But... It still looks cool. Oh, that's awesome. A pity. Nobody else can see that, but unless I pop the... I'm going to pop the screen up to the screen. I don't know if you'll see it, but... <laughs> War hamster. Look at that. Ah, oh, that is mint. Where did you get... Have you made the head yourself, or is that just something that you found, or what? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Approved. I see what you mean about the size. It is maybe a little bit large, but it still looks fantastic. <laughs> Uh, since model making is planned to use Luminarch as a Hurricanum instead, I'll probably end up getting that with some Battle Mages to go BOOM! I don't know what any of that means. I just decided to make the one that looks the coolest. Uh, 
Do -do -do. Unless you just mean you're waiting on me to do mine so you can see how I do it and then you'll do yours. It does amaze me actually. I feel really bad sometimes because there's so many people say, are you ever going to make this kit? And I'll say yes. And they'll say brilliant because I've got it and I just want to wait, watch you build it first. Like for example, Derek Grotowski, uh, follower Derek Grotowski, I don't think I've ever seen in chat, so I don't know if he ever watches these. Many, many moons ago, he said, brilliant, you've got yourself the um, uh, Mortarian. I'll wait to build mine so I can see how you paint it. And that's, I've had it for like seven or eight months. Right, so I need to do the floor and the things and that. Can I do this without doing the other bit? Because I'm kind of dying for a wee. I'll be honest. Can I do this without putting the top bit on? Or do I need to put the top bit on first? Uh, is that even the right way to? I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just jamming things together here like a random idiot. Let's see how this goes. I don't know how it goes. It goes like that. Uh, I'm going to have to do some figuring out here, I think, aren't I? Yes, probably. I've even got the right way up. No, probably not. <laughs> Idiot. Okay, that's going to be. Is that going to be a tenuous. Is it even the right one? <sighs> right, that's that way. So that would go. So it would be that one. Would be that way. That's going to be tenuous. Wow, that's going to be a real tenuous. I'm going to have to sit and think about this one. And do some thinky thinky, I think, on that one. So I think what we shall do, folks, is I shall call it a show there. Because I need to sit and figure that out. Also, I'm dying for a wee. Like, big, massive wee. Uh, let's have a quick last look at chat. Sigmar Fox with the other factions. Stormcast can ally with the rest of other factions. Cool. I get you now. Nimsinderil. Nimsinderil. Words. Nim Cinderin says lol 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 lol. Gashapon toy. Oh, dude, if oh, you need to figure out some way of making a mold of that so you can copy it like a hundred times. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I did look online. I did look online to see because of all the different companies that make like resin add on parts for Warhammer figures, like heads for Space Marines and things like that. You all know if you know Anvil and other places that do them. I did look and see if anybody actually did like hamster heads. Like Warhamster, but nobody does. If anybody watching this works for it, has a company or works for me that make resin add ons and figures, like you know, you people that make female space marines that you know, or they make extra heads for Death Corps Krieg or you know, bits for and they call them, you know, who I mean. If you're one of those companies, you, you need to make Warhamsters, you need to make hamster heads for space marines because that would be brilliant. And I'd buy them all, I really would. Just, just do it, just make hamster heads. I'll resin, I'll do it fine. Just, you need to do it. If you have that kind of company, do it. And then send lots of them to me, and I'll make lots of them. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a Solar Array one. You're doing the Planetarium, says Vincent. Yeah, I had to do the Planetarium, because it's got all the... Oh, you can't, you can't not like it. Uh, Jimmy Byrne says, Fox, when is the next Warhammer Conquest video coming out? I am working on it right now. I had to pack all the stuff away to um, get this out. Uh, I've got to finish. I've just started painting the um, Mephitic Blight Hauler. The next step here is going to be the Librarian, the Blight Hauler, and more damn Poxwalkers. Uh, I've just got to finish painting the Blight Hauler, do some shades, and then the video's ready. So in the next few days, probably. Do, 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 do. I'll have a gander at what uh, stuff there. I have the stuff to make a mold and copy. It says, Paul, you need to do it. You need to do it. Uh, no, the Star Drake is blooming great on the table. It's a nightmare to kill. Says Dave, that's another Age of Signal thing. No, no, no. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do, folks, <coughs> I think we'll call it a show there. We're only half an hour early. But I really need to go for a great big wee. And there's no point going now. And there's not much more I can do. I need to sit and carefully consider that. So, uh, thank you to everyone who's been watching. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Back to normal time this week. Normal three-hour job. Almost three hours. Don't forget, of course, uh, tomorrow is Monday and it's the last uh, eModels live show of the year with me, Ted and Chris. Although we will have a Christmas special at some point over the Christmas holidays. I've forgotten the date now. We'll have a Christmas special where we'll be building one of the little Meng tanks uh, in sort of three or four hours. Get it all built up and painted up and weathered and everything. That'll be a live stream special. So that's tomorrow. Don't forget, of course, tonight, Gross Models. 
8 p.m. He does his Warhammer Sunday, where he ca he does his own little Warhammer things. Uh, kind of carries on for me, and I believe he's starting on his Torox tonight. I think I could be wrong. He might be starting on his Torox. So do come along and watch that. I'll be in the chat for a bit. Uh, but just remains for me to say thank you very much for watching to everyone who's joined me today. If you want a sticker today, remember to send me an email with your name, address, and which sticker you want, so I know which one to send you. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, yes, the um, I forgot which video it is now. Which video is it? There's a video coming out of early access in the next day or two. It's the weathering on the Torox. That's the one. Keep an eye open for that. So you can see how I weathered this thing to make it nice and weathered, to, like you'd see a proper display model, but in such a way that you can still play it on the tabletop. So as I really, really need to go for a great big wee, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I'm going to have to go now. <laughs> Trust me on this. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time, adios amoebas. Where's the music? Where's the music? Thank you.